Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter and welcome to Monster Hunter Rise. This video is for the absolute beginner. You've just gotten Monster Hunter Rise or you're thinking about it, you don't know how to play, or maybe you tried and there was just way too much text bubbles and way too much weird tutorials and you just didn't really get it. A lot of people say that Monster Hunter Rise is, or like any other Monster Hunter, is much better when you have someone who has played it who can sit down next to you and explain it. So please consider this to be that video. Me sitting down virtually on your couch and we're gonna play the first few hours. Hopefully I'll be able to explain all the base mechanics and not overflow you with information. And by the end, you'll understand the core loop. You'll understand the functions of how the game works and you'll even have your first armor set and weapon upgrade. Hopefully that'll put you on the path and you'll be able to have lots of fun. I do apologize, I might have some really weird um, speech scenes. I'm not scripting this, I'm going to be doing it pretty much live as I play and I'm not, I'm not going to use many edits. Uh, I find doing jump edits to be very confusing, especially if you're trying to play alongside me. Uh, so yeah, without any further ado, let's jump in. So we'll start out with the new game. This is with version 1.1.2, I believe. Uh, there is going to be an update at the end of April but that is mainly concerning for end game content. So when you start your game, you're gonna be able to choose your hunter. You can choose from type A, uh, type one, or type two. Uh, do take your time to do this. Um, you can change your hairstyle and stuff like that later, uh, but a lot of the features here about uh, sort of making your hunter look how you want is not something that you can change easily later or at all. So definitely take your time to make your hunter look how you want. You can press L and R here and actually check uh, how they look at all angles and all different types of light, so have a lot of fun. And once you're done, go ahead and let's name the character. So for our character, we'll call them the traditional Hunter. <laughs> Not very original, right? Okay, once you're done creating your character, you will create two pets. This is a dog, it's called a Palamute, and then there's a cat called a Palico. These are companions that will hunt and uh, pretty much run aside you in all your quests, and they're going to be very helpful. The good news is, is that you'll be able to recruit um, pretty much an endless amount of new Palamutes and Palicos later in the game. So this part is less crucial than um, creating your hunter. But go ahead and have fun. These are your default, and so you are going to fall in love with them. So make sure you set them up how you like. Uh, once you've done visually uh, decorating your dog however you like, let's go ahead and give it a name. We will aptly call this one dog. Yes. And then we have our Palamute, our Palico. Now the Palicos are really good and outside the dogs who are really just visual at this point, there is a support type for the cat. I recommend just keeping it default on healer. Uh, it's going to create little you know, healing bubbles uh, as you play. It's gonna be very helpful. Where if you're more experienced, you might go off and immediately change it to another type and that will change the tips of abilities that it has. Once we're done uh, with our cat, we're just going to name it. As you can tell, I have done this several times before and the last time I did this, I accidentally forgot to hit the on switch for my mic. Oof, <laughs> very painful. So one thing I think I am going to do is skip the cutscenes. I think this is a fun thing that you can enjoy on your own time, so uh, it doesn't really teach you too much. This just gives you a little history of Kamura Village, which is the base of where this game takes place, and the Elder Fugen. I love how they start out by saying, you are now a certified hunter, <laughs> even though they haven't taught us anything. Um, okay, so obviously this uh, town is coming, uh, going to have a rampage uh, sometime soon. This is basically... A bunch of monsters attack this village and they need everybody to pitch in to help uh, defend it. Uh, and your job is to sort of train yourself up and become a better hunter so that you can help save this village. Um, so this is our main quest maiden called Hinoa. She's going to be sort of giving us a walkthrough of this village and all the different uh, facilities that we want to use. Of course, I don't necessarily would agree with the game with how they try to do all these tutorials, which is through all these pop-ups. Um, but right now all they're trying to do is teach us how to walk, which is with the left stick. So left stick allows us to walk and we can hold R to dash. Good thing is, is we are in the village, uh, so there's no stamina or anything like that. We can run as long as we want and we are good. One thing I want to note here is Monster Hunter is not an, an adventure game. So this is our, basically our hub town. 
We're not going to be going out traveling. We're not going to be going to other villages. There's no world map or anything like that. Pretty much this is where everything takes place. You will never be able to leave this gate. It's all just visual. Uh, and this town basically just has the things that you mainly want, which is a quest counter, an item shop, a place to make weapons, uh, armor, uh, and some fun NPCs to interact with, and that's it. Uh, so it's basically an L shape. Uh, you got all your functions down this main road here, and then you just have the elder up here, who at certain points during the story will have a bubble over his head for you to talk to. Uh, so it's actually a very simple game in that regard. So here, you know, I wants to introduce us to Kagero. He is the shop, so to say. This is where you'll go in the game to buy uh, items. Also, if you have amiibos, he does have a little lottery thing you can do each day just for some useful items. Uh, we'll talk to him later. He actually has nothing to sell us right now. This is basically where you're going to be going back to um, after most quests is going to be the armory. These guys here. Um, he allows you to create new weapons and armor for your hunter, and this cat allows you to create new weapons and armor for your pets. So let's talk to Hammond the blacksmith. Everybody's busy, but we're just going around saying hi to everybody. And they've given us two places to go to. They want us to talk to the chef, which is Yomogi, or we can go and talk to his grandson, Iori, and that is a place called Buddy Plaza where we can do all sorts of confusing stuff. At this point in the game, it's way too early to be worrying about, you know, recruiting new dogs and cats because we haven't even gone on a hunt yet. Um, this cat here will allow you to create <laughs> armor for these guys. So let's go ahead and talk to Yomo Yomogi. She's our dango shop. Uh, this is basically where we go uh, after every quest. We come back to town. We eat a meal, which gives us buffs. And then we go on a quest. So let's say we're fighting an ice monster, we can eat a meal that gives us ice resistance, and then we can go off on a quest. So you'll be sitting down and eating pretty much every single hunt. So let's go ahead and say hi to her. Yomogi is best girl. So they want us to equip a weapon instead of teaching us how to do this they just automatically did it which i think is kind of a bad move uh, but they've gone ahead and equipped us with a long sword uh, i will go over this stuff in just a little bit let's just quick get um, all this tutorial stuff out of the way so we're going to go in here and this is the gathering hub so the game basically has two modes of play there is the village uh, which is this area here and there's going to be a quest counter right here where we'll primarily um, be doing it's only single player. Um, it's pretty easy. The quests are more like tutorials. Um, and that'll allow us to sort of progress through the main story. Uh, and each time that we clear the quest, we basically are going to start working on expanding the village. Or we have the Gathering Hub. The Gathering Hub is a place for harder type of quests. So you can consider it more of a harder difficulty, more like the normal difficulty. Um, and the Gathering Hub, because it is harder, we are allowed to go online or local uh, with other players and go on quests. So we can do anywhere from single player uh, to four players and the game will scale the difficulty for one, two, three, or four hunters. Um, so you may have called, heard this called the online hub in previous games, but it's not online. Um, as, even as a single player, you're expected to play both the village and the gathering hub. They're two very different ways to progress in the game. Let's go ahead and, uh, can we skip this? Yeah. Okay, Hojo has registered as a hunter. Good for him. And my favorite girl, Minoto, who is the twin of Hinoa. She is the quest counter for the hub. Before anything else, they want us to go and talk to Master Utsushi. Let's go ahead and do that. I know you're not real. This is too much. Uh, I'm just trying to get through the tutorial so that I can give you my tutorial. <laughs> for some reason, they want to teach us how to use the camera already which is kind of weird. So using the D-pad, uh, you can press left and there's some shortcuts here. Um, we're going to go ahead and choose the camera and press down. And that will allow us to aim with the right stick and press A to take his picture. Press B to get out, talk to him, and he will be happy. What a narcissist. Okay, so the game is almost ready for us to start. We're going to leave the gathering hub here. 
Let's go and talk to Hinoa. Ignore all the different pop-ups. It's a little too much at this point. You know what is always going to be sitting here? She is our main village quest maiden, our sort of desk receptionist so that we can go on quests. And she is going to give us our first buddy, which is a Kahoot. It's an owl. Uh, this is kind of like a little mascot in the game. Um, it's not hugely important to anything in the game, uh, but you are able to earn little things to dress it up. So go ahead and name your owl whatever you want. Very cute. And they're giving us a petal lace, but I will explain that later because at this point, you don't even know what a sparrow bird is. Oh, Capcom, you need to get better at this tutorial stuff. We're just going to go through a bunch of all this. Okay, so Hinoa, let's go ahead and talk to her just so I can show you the main functions here. So much text. <laughs> so much text. Okay, so when you talk to the main quest counter here, you're going to get a list of different quests you can go on. You have a thing that's always called optional subquest. This is something that you always want to have active. So when you choose it, um, they'll give you a total of, how many is this? Eight different random things and objectives. And you can always have five of them active. Um, these things will automatically track and clear as you do them. Uh, and they're just a way that you can earn points, which you can use around the village and armor spheres for upgrading your gear just by doing things as you play the game. So I recommend we go ahead, we're gonna be doing lots of gathering in the first quests. So let's go ahead and press A and select some of those. Uh, yeah, let's do all these. And then we'll do uh, small monster slain maybe. If you're not happy with some of these, if you notice that you're never picking up plants for some reason, you can press Y to abandon it uh, and choose another one. Just make sure that you always have five active so that you're earning stuff. Um, as you play. So let's do this actually. Chit chat is just an option to chit chat and get to know the villagers better. And if we go to urgent quest right now, it means that she doesn't have any quests ready for us. It means that the game is trying to get us to get up to the next rank. So they have a tutorial quest here. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do our own tutorial, uh, which we'll worry about in a bit. This is the mailman, Sendy. This is a cat uh, that will allow you to connect online with other hunters. This is basically your online hub. So we'll go ahead and we'll talk to it just to show you what it is. More pop-ups, more things. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead and read all this if you're playing it for the first time. Uh, so basically, if you want to play online, you'll go here and you can make a room. Or you can play locally with a friend. You can see your Nintendo Switch friend list here, so it makes it very easy to jump in if they have a lobby open. Uh, you can change your lobby settings and stuff like that. If you just purchase the game, if you go to add on content, it will access online. And sometimes there are things like this is a DLC thing I bought. Uh, but you may also have these things, which is the celebration for um, the title having a successful launch where they're giving away stuff like mega potions and stakes and other very uh, useful items, so go, make sure you just go ahead and claim everything that is in here. We'll get all of our add-on content. You will not have as much as I did. Uh, again, I bought the DLC, which comes with a bunch of different items and cosmetics. Uh, so don't worry about that if you don't have it. Okay, we're almost ready to really start our tutorial for this game. What I want to do is show you where your house and is, and that is right here. So this is the main town. We have a house. The house is just for fun. Um, you don't actually ever have to go to your house. It's just a place where you can decorate uh, with trophies as you sort of uh, progress in the game. Take pictures, you can decorate your house with those. And you have a housekeeper who can do a bunch of different functions for you uh, just so you don't have to run around town. So let's go ahead and say hi to the housekeeper. And there is a hidden cat here who you want to talk to every now and then uh, who is the informant. <laughs> And he will tell you really funny stuff about each of the villagers as you progress through the game. So that's our house. All this stuff over here is just cosmetic. So they're villagers to talk to and enjoy interact with, but there's really nothing to do. And we're going to go in here. This next section of the game is basically dedicated only to buddies, which is the dogs and cats. This isn't something we're going to be interacting with yet at this point. Um, honestly, we just started the game. Uh, but it is very useful, especially if you get into uh, the pet system. Unfortunately, I'm not able to skip this. 
The reason why we're going here now is because this gives us access to the training room, which I really want to go to because I don't want to rely on the game's tutorial to teach you about how to move around. So now they're going to go and just give us a whole bunch of text and explain all of these features to us. So much! Okay. So, you know what? I'll give you the one-liner, even though you don't have to re quite remember it. Um, Yodi here is where you go if you want to get new cats and dogs. Let's say you really want a red dog or with black spots or something like that. You can go ahead and decide what uh, type of dog you want and he'll find it for you. Or you want more cats. Let's say you don't want to go online with a dog and a cat. You want two cats or two dogs. You can go ahead and recruit uh, new pets here. Uh, this is a mini game later on which opens up. This is basically where you can take a bunch of your extra pets and send them off on their own quest. Uh, and then they'll come back with items. Very useful. This is just a place where you can watch your uh, pets training. Uh, if you go to him, you can have uh, cats and dogs training to level up. So even the ones that you didn't bring on a quest can do. And then we have the trader, which is the most confusing menu in the game, which I'll show you in a little bit. This is where, this is basically your farm. This is where you'll send off cats and dogs to bring back items like honey and stuff that can make potions and other useful stuff. So you see the pets are really used in this game to do a lot of utility uh, instead of making you do all of it. But what we really want to do is go to the training area which you have to actually access manually for some reason. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit move and from this point we'll be able to fast travel anywhere in the game. It's going to be very fast um, so don't worry about that. The training area is a wonderful place to try out new stuff. Uh, we can learn our weapons, we can learn how to move around, and that is what we're going to do here for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes or so? Because I think it's very important to understand the movement in this game. I think it's in direct correlation with how much you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so they give us this beautiful little intro. And we have a little cat here who runs the place. <laughs> Now, we're going to go in here and learn how to move around. Um, our cats and dogs will attack and move and do stuff at the same time that we're going to be doing it. So I am going to use the D-pad here, and I'm going to do the wait command. The wait command will just have them sit right here, and they won't join us. So if you ever just want to take pictures and you don't want them always in the photo, just hit wait, and we can run off, and they will not come. We can go ahead and hit go, and they will come and join us, and we'll have them wait again. Now, the one thing the game did not tell you is that although it started you with this long sword, if you go to your item box, you notice here under manage equipment, change equipment, and you go to our weapon, we actually have one of all 14 different weapons, uh, which they've given us. They're not very good weapons, um, but they're starter weapons for everything. So you can try all these out and see which one you like. Now, much like a fighting game like Street Fighter or something like that, or Mortal Kombat, like every single one of these is its own fighter. They're very different, and what is really fun jibes with one person is going to be different for another. And so the fun of your first playthrough of Monster Hunter will greatly, greatly depend on you finding a weapon that works really well for you. At the very end of the video, I may give a sort of an elevator pitch for each of the weapons, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to stick with the longsword, which they gave us. Uh, I think it's very, very simplistic to start, but it's also a very complicated high skill weapon, so you can stick with it, and really it's it's just, it's one of the most popular weapons for good reason. Uh, but we'll stick with it because it's very easy to understand the basics of it. Uh, but that's just so you know that you can play around with all the different weapons. And we do have our armor and all that kind of stuff. So, what I really want to do here, though, in this room here, is talk about how to move around and what all this different UI stuff, because you'll notice the screen is a lot more cluttered than it was previously. The first thing you'll take notice is the upper left of the screen. We've got our hunter name. Uh, we've got a little icon to the left of it, and if you notice, there's like this little red eye icon. It just means that a monster has spotted us, which is this training room that the cat above there is controlling. Um, it's not going to hit us back unless we change the settings for it to do so. It's just a place where we can hit it. Below that is a long green bar that is our health. Obviously, when you run out of health, you die. But in Monster Hunter, instead of dying, what happens is we call it a cart. Uh, you'll be sent back to camp. And if that happens three times, you fail the quest. So you can cart twice. 
but not three times. Below that is the stamina gauge. If you notice as we just walk around, it's not being depleted, but hold R and run, and you'll notice that stamina starts to become depleted. It's very important to keep in mind because you are gonna to wanna to be running around by default. I mean, there's not a lot of monsters in this game where you can just be casually walking around them. Uh, they are going to be actively trying to attack you. Uh, so make sure that you get used to running and keeping track of your stamina. Now, if it was just running, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but a very important part of this game is the ability to evade. So if you press B, uh, you'll go ahead and you'll do like a dodge roll here. This will allow you to get out of the way, to really reposition fast, and this is going to be very important. You can do it while running, and if you notice, you will do this huge dash. This is a technique called the leap. Uh, it's We call it like the Superman dive, but if you have your back to, the, to a monster like this and you run away, and you press B, you'll do this like crazy dive, and you're actually invincible during all of it. So if you're ever really in trouble, put your back to the monster and press B, and you'll do a dive. If you try to do it while facing the monster, it won't. It'll just evade. Um, so if you're trying to run away, make sure that you have your back to them when you do that jump. But yeah, evading is great. If you run out of stamina, obviously you're not going to be able to do any more rolls. And if you're out of stamina and you try to run, then this happens. Your hunter has to stop and catch their breath. Not exactly something you want to happen during battle. <laughs> so make sure to keep track of your stamina. Um, hold down the L button and then use Y and A and we can actually cycle through our items which are in our item pouch which we can customize later. The game has given us some rations which is meat. Anytime you eat meat in this game you get more stamina which is great. Since we're in the training room it's not actually going to use the item it's just going to give us the effect. So let's go ahead and get a lot of stamina because we're going to need it. And this is where you'll go. You'll generally want to set this to potions or high potion or mega potions just so that you can heal at any time. So once you have an item set, all you have to do is press the Y button and you'll use that item. If you notice here, we're chugging a potion. Obviously, we don't need it because we have full health. The thing I wanted to explain to you is that you don't actually need to wait for the full animation. If we're healing and we're feeling good, we need to get out of the way. We can quick cancel out of it using an uh, evasive maneuver. If you accidentally take out your weapon during this next part, um, which whoops, which is like this, and you don't know how to put it away, go ahead and press the Y button. Before we go on and talk about the other UI elements underneath your stamina gauge, I want to talk about how movement goes in this game. If you notice underneath our hunter are these two little bug icons. These are called wire bugs, and this is basically the main feature of the game. Go ahead and hold ZL, and if you notice, a target reticle appears. Now go ahead and use your right stick if you notice you can aim it. If you press ZR, you'll use one of those wire bugs to do a jump. Now there are two sort of easy ways to use this without aiming. Just hold ZL and press X and you'll do a 45 degree jump, which is very useful. So if you need to get up ledges or if you want to do a jumping attack, you can just go and if you want to, there are a bunch of options. So when you're in the air, you can always press B to do an evade. It's very cool. You can do that in any direction. So you can go to the left. We can do it behind. We can do it to the right. Or we can do it in front. And you can delay your input as well and really get creative with it. You can actually uh, cross a lot of distance. The other thing that you can do in the air, and this includes whether if you jump off a ledge or if you use a wire bug, is you can press the A button and you will dangle in the air. This doesn't cost any wire bugs. It's pretty much free to do. You can do it once and you will just hang until you run out of momentum. What this allows you to do is to really think about what you're going to do next. So let's say we're here. Okay, let's go backwards. Or you can use it to really traverse really far. So you can go this, then do an evade afterwards to get really far. So if you want to see the difference of how far you can travel uh, just using these two techniques, uh, let's check this out. So right now we're just going to use the ZL and X to do a 45 degree angle and we'll do B to do an invade afterwards. Yeah, so we can travel all the way down here. It's, it's pretty far. Now, if you notice, we're going to use the uh, ZR button to really aim. 
We can get even higher than 45 degrees, which will allow us to travel more distance um, if we do this. And we can really reach great heights. So we want to go all the way over to that ledge there. And we're going to use the A button as well. So let's go CR, A, Evade. And look at that. We got all the way up to this cannon from all the way back there. Um, make sure to mess around with all this stuff. It's amazing uh, how much you can move and run around with these things. The other technique we can do, uh, we can hold ZL and remember X was diagonal. If we hold ZL and we press A, we'll do a forward uh, sort of wire zip. This is really good if you're just trying to move really fast or get out of the way. You can, Of course, you can only do these with your weapon out. Um, without your weapon out, sorry. Uh, so we've got this. We've got the X button for 45 degrees. Or we can aim it and get even more height. And just as a refresher, we can press A to hang in the air. And we can press B to evade whether we do the hang or not. Cool thing about this target reticle, though, even if you're not using it, is that if you notice, uh, let's go over here. If you have it up against a wall and there's no change in it, it means that we can't run up that wall. So if we do a wire bug here, we just sort of jump. However, if we go to a wall that we can actually run up, just like a ninja, you notice the target reticle has this sort of crosshair. That means that we can climb up it. And this game is like Zelda Breath of the Wild. There's a lot of stuff we can climb. And climbing is going to be a huge part of your exploration in this game. So let's get used to that really fast. So anytime you're at a climbable distance, just wire bug into it. And you'll immediately grab onto it and start running up. So if you notice, there's a little run up and your hunter jumps off. What you need to do is hold the R button uh, and use the L stick to run. So let's go ahead and just, we're going to run up the wall, so to say. And we'll run up. And if you notice, our stamina goes down. And we'll keep running until we reach the end or our stamina runs out. And then we'll fall down. In Monster Hunter, there's no fall damage. So you can fall and jump from as high of a distance as you want. And you're totally fine. So one of the things we can do to infinitely scale walls if we want, because we're going to need to do this, um, is to aim at the wall. Let's aim as high as we can. Jump up. And when we run out of stamina, we're going to hit the A button. And we're going to dangle in the air a little bit. And if you notice our stamina gets back, then we're going to jump right back on the wall and continue running up. And hit the A button. And if you notice, we can climb up really high. How high are we right now? <laughs> yeah, we're really high. We can even run left and right if we press left and right on the input. Uh, let's jump down to this ledge here. Ooh, bonk. The hunter has very strong legs. There are some uh, vines in some areas where we can actually run, which is kind of nice. Uh, let's say we want to get over to that ledge. We can go ahead and press ZL, press ZR, and then B to evade. Boop. Now get us on the ledge here. And let's say we want to get all the way over there. What we'll do is those techniques. We can do two wire bugs in a row uh, with our evades to get over there. Ah, oh, we missed it. Oof. That hurts. But we can climb up it as well. So let's do that. So we'll hang. Regain a little bit of stamina. Jump back. Regain stamina. And jump back up. And we'll just jump off here. Whoa. <laughs> Not quite what I wanted to do. But you can see this is how we can move around very fast and very far in this game. There's even a secret area up here. We can do two wire bugs in a row. We don't actually have to do jumps. Uh, we'll wait for our wire bugs to recharge here. Whew. And there's a little secret area here. There's nothing to do up here. This is just a secret little area you can play around in. So let me show you that lack of uh, fall damage here. What? No. Oh. Yeah, I pressed A. I cheated. No, there's no fall damage at all. Okay, so that is basically how movement works. Uh, so make sure to mess around with this stuff. Uh, once you get really good at it, uh, you'll be able to move around really freely. Um, you'll be able to jump across platforms, traverse very fast, and it's just really, really fun. So example, we want to get on top of there. If we tried using X, uh, we won't get high enough. 
So that if we aim using ZR, we can press B to evade. Oh, it's not quite high enough, is it? So we'll just do two in a row then. There we go. <laughs> but that is how movement with the wire bugs works. Now I think I want to talk about the weapon a little bit, um, and I don't want to get too in depth. I'm just going to show you very basics, three different moves, and that's all we're going to need in order to hunt. So first thing to notice here is press the X button to draw your weapon. Press your Y button to put it away. If you have any forward input, you'll actually draw into an attack. So we have our uh, step slash, which we're doing here. Oosh. <laughs> And if you notice underneath our stamina gauge is this bar with red, orange, and yellow. That is our sharpness gauge. In general, you want to have your sharpness at top condition. You'd never want to be hitting with red or orange sharpness. Unfortunately, the game does start us with yellow sharpness, but once we progress, we'll have the option of making weapons with green sharpness, which we'll definitely want to do. Um, but basically, the more sharpness, the, the colors as they go up, you get more attack power. Uh, so, for example, if yellow is a multiplier of 100% of our attack power, green is 105%, and later on you'll get blue, which is like um, 112%, and stuff like that. So it will get some more powerful as your sharpness goes up. Also, if you hit a really hard part of a monster, you'll bounce off if your sharpness is really bad, um, which is unfortunate because you'll still do damage, but it eats through your sharpness at double the rate, and you'll bounce off. Bonk. <laughs> it's not a very good time. Um, if you notice, our sharpness is going down uh, two ticks with each attack. Or for just normal, it goes down one tick for one attack. Let's go ahead and attack here. So at any time we run out of sharpness or we go down, or if we're safe, we can go ahead and put away our weapon and press Y. And we can use this whetstone, which is in our inventory. This is infinite. You don't have to worry about it. And that will sharpen up your weapon. And we're ready to attack again. Very useful to get used to that. So, what I want to teach about this weapon, the longsword, is there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this weapon, but there's only three moves that I'm going to teach you now. The first one is that your basic combo is done using the X button. So you'll start out by doing step slash, overhead slash, a thrust, and rising slash. And it's just a nice four hit combo that will infinitely loop. Uh, so you can go ahead and just whap away at monsters. It hits exactly what's in front of you. Uh, so it's very easy to understand. There we go. And you may have noticed as we were hitting the monster, that little katana icon next to our sharpness was starting to fill up. So let's wait and you'll see it actually go down. It'll start depleting. This is unique to just the longsword. Um, this is called your spirit gauge. So as you hit monsters, you'll get spirit energy. And then all we have to do is jam on the ZR button to do our spirit blade combo. So we got one, two, three, which is a multi-hit, and then four, huge round slash. Very fancy, it'll put our weapon away, and if you notice, now our katana, or our tachi, is glowing white. It means that all of our attacks are actually more powerful now. Uh, and you guessed it right, uh, we can go ahead and hit some more. So let's build up that gauge, and let's do another combo. Combo takes about 85%, uh, so you want to make sure that you're pretty full up uh, before you attempt to do the full combo. And that gets us to yellow, and yellow is even more attack. I think it's 10%. And if we do another one, we'll hit our final buff mode, which is red. Red is a believed 20% attack increase. Um, so attacking in red is going to do a lot more damage than just attacking normally. So generally, you just want to stay in this mode. If you notice that the red around our blade is starting to go down, it's because red only lasts for 60 seconds. But we can always do another uh, spirit round slash, and that will reset it. Oh, we need to sharpen. Yeah, here's what happens. Watch our damage now. Uh, it actually goes down quite a bit. Well, this is a training area, so you can't really tell so much. But the damage goes way down. So let's go ahead and sharpen our weapon. Red goes back down to yellow. Uh, it doesn't. You don't just lose everything, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, basically the long sword is that you attack to gain energy, and at any time you use that energy to pull off the spirit blade combo. You don't actually have to use the full spirit blade combo. You can just use it to do, get some nice hits in because they're really powerful. Three, and we can evade and get out, and just do more normal attacks and build up energy. It's totally fine. 
cool thing about the spirit blade attacks is that you'll never bounce off a monster. You can be attacking the hard part if you remember we bounce off normally. Well, if we do a spirit combo, we're not doing a whole lot of damage, uh, but we're not getting interrupted, which is really nice. We are still eating through our sharpness, though. <laughs> And the very last move I want to teach you, so this is very easy. X to do your basic combo and ZR to do a Spirit Blade combo. The last thing I want to show you just right now is called a Fade Slash. If you press X and A at the same time, you'll do this really wonderful uh, backslash swoop. Um, it's not an invade, it's an attack, so you can get hit during it. Um, but this will allow you to reposition really well. And if you do it after an attack, you can do it like this and quick get out of the way. And we can even have left and right input on the left stick. And we can fade slash to the left and right. So the monster's coming at us. Uh-oh. Quick, get out of the way. It allows us to keep up attacking while also moving. Very, very convenient. Now, there's one reason why I want to teach you this move. Not only because it's good for just repositioning and getting out of the way, but it's also a much easier way to get your spirit combo up. So if you remember, our normal spirit combo takes a full one two, three, four hits. And if you notice, it took like 90% of that spirit energy in order to pull off. Well, watch what happens if we hit ZR after a fade slash with, let's say, um, well, let's, we'll fill up all the energy so you can see. So do a fade slash and then hit ZR. We get this fancy move, which allows us to go straight into spirit blade three in the final. And it uses much less energy. Um, let's go ahead and sharpen again. So it's a way to very quickly uh, get your spirit combo up is to do ZR after a spade slash. So we can do stuff like this. Oosh. <laughs> and right now, I'm sure people, if you are watching this video for some weird reason, if you already know Monster Hunter and they know this weapon, they're probably biting their tongue right now because there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do with this weapon. You can do counters. Uh, there's a lot of powerful attacks you can do, but I'm not going to teach you that. Not right now. All you need to know for now to start the game is that your X is your uh, basic attack. B is for evade. Anytime you can press X and A afterwards to do a fade slash in different directions. And when you have energy built up, hit ZR. You don't have to do all of them, uh, but you want to go and finish your combo. And you can level up your spirit level and that makes you more powerful. That's all we need to know. Um, and if you are curious, if you use a wire bug and press X, you can do a jumping attack. Um, in general, though, you're, you're, this is not a jumping attack game. You're not going to be doing it that often. Um, and there are two actual skills we can do using the wire bugs with the weapon out, but I'll show you those later. We don't really need to go through them right now. Okay, now that we've got the basics done, uh, the way we can quick travel around town is by holding the minus button. This will give us a town map. And at any time, we can jump around the town. There is some loading if you're coming from the training zone. But other than that, everything else... Oh, why did I go back to the training area? Everything else loads automatically. So, sorry about that. I'm back in the training area. <laughs> okay, so we got Buddy Plaza. We got the main town, which is Steelworks. That's basically the one you're going to be using a lot. Uh, we can jump to our room. We can go to the village entrance, which I've never used. I don't know why they have that as an option. Uh, we can go to the gathering hub entrance, which I've never used either. The hub prep area, which we'll cover later. And the gathering hub, which we've seen before. So if you ever want to just get back to the middle of town, just choose Steelworks here. And that'll get us back here. Now I wonder, are we are they even able to... Yeah, so we can actually talk to our NPCs now and we can see what they're doing. Um, so this is the market. Uh, this is where we can buy useful things like potions to heal our hunter. And some other items we are, you know, you can mess around with, but we're not going to cover right now. Um, but yeah, that's the market. Every now and then there's some special music playing and they have a sale and things are half off, which is nice. In general, though, you're not going to have a lot of money uh, early on in the game. So buying potions from him is not a very good idea. What we're going to be doing is making our own potions. If you press the plus button and go to crafting list, we can get a list of how items are crafted in this game. And all it takes is an herb to make a potion. So if we grab an herb outside during the game, it'll automatically craft a potion for us. Mega potion is a potion and honey. So we'll do that. 
So I do want to talk about the weapon system really fast because the game starts us out with a very, very weak weapon. Uh, let's press the start button and go down to equipment info. So we have the Kamura Blade 1. It's rarity 1, which is, okay, the rarity. Attack uh, rating is 50, which just means that if you have another weapon of 50 attack, obviously every attack is not doing 50 damage, uh, but this is the power rating. So while some attacks uh, for some weapons are very big, heavy, and long to do, and they do a lot of damage, some weapons are very fast to attack, uh, but they lose small damage. The overall damage output is going to be the same if it has the same attack rating. So it shouldn't take you any longer to finish a hunt um, if you're using the same attack from one weapon to another. There's our sharpness gauge. If we notice there's room for it to improve, which will happen as we upgrade our weapon later on in the game. Element, uh, some weapons have an element on top of it that can do some extra damage. This one does not. Affinity is a term that means uh, your critical hit rate. So this is 0%, which means we will never ever land a critical hit. Uh, in Monster Hunter, a critical hit means a 125% damage. So 25% damage up. Only weapons with affinity as a stat can do a critical hit. So if this had an affinity of 10%, means that when we attack, we have a 10% chance of doing a critical hit, which is worth 25% more damage. As you get later in the game, you'll have games with affinity, some with none, even some weapons with minus affinity, meaning that if you hit a negative crit, you'll do 75% damage instead of 100. But just know that affinity is not a stat that changes. I know it sounds like it'll go up as you use the weapon. It doesn't. Uh, weapons always remain the same power until you upgrade them. And slots is something that the game will introduce to you much later. So if we go over here to the armory, so Hyman, and we go to, let's get past this. He's got a different bunch of different options. We could just chat with him just to get to know him better. Uh, we can do I access our item box like we do here, like usual. The Kinsect is only for the Insect Glaive weapon, which you don't have to worry about right now. And the bow gun is only for bow guns, the light bow gun and heavy bow gun. They have some special customization options. The main two things we have here is the forge and upgrade weapons and armor. So if we go under armor, now uh, you'll notice we this is a little confusing, um, but the E means that we have it equipped. So we have the Kimura armor equipped. Each piece gives us a level, it's level one, defense only one point, which is <laughs> very, very bad. Um, and no elemental uh, resistance outside of fire. Now if we tab over to the right uh, using ZR, we can see that there are some skills on this set. Um, when you have a skill, you can press in the right stick, the R3 button, and we can see what this skill actually is. This is called Divine Blessing. And it says when it's active, um, this is, I think it's a 30% chance, it'll reduce our damage by 15%. So having this on means that sometimes we'll take less damage, which is nice. This one has Wirebug Whisperer, which extends the duration we can keep a Wirebug by 30%. Um, as you saw in the training room, we always have two Wirebugs. Uh, those are permanent. But there are some wild wire bugs we can find outside during a hunt. So we can have a third wire, uh, third wire bug. Just means that we can keep it longer, which is nice. Heroics. So when our health drops below 35%, which means we're in danger of dying, it will increase our defense by 50 points. Okay, that's pretty powerful, considering that our current defense is only 5. 50 points is quite a bit. Uh, let's see here. Critical Eye says it gives us an affinity of 5%. So if you notice, our weapon had a 0% affinity. With uh, this on, it gives us a 5% chance of doing a critical hit. Not much, but it's not bad. And we have Wall Runner, which reduces the stamina consumption by 25% when wall running. So that's nice. So if you notice, when I hit the plus button and I went to Equipment Info, we had 0% affinity. To see your current stats, you actually have to go to Status. And then we can tab over using ZR and we can see our current status is 50 attack with 5% affinity, 6 defense, and a bunch of elemental defense. 6 defense is actually god horrible. Um, we'll try to fix that. Um, if you notice here, we do have an option to make our first set, which is called the leather set. Um, these things have uh, skills such as, you could just go over here and see the entire things. Um, hunger resistance, uh, botanist, geologist. This is basically a gathering set that's going to be very good to make later early in the game if you want to go around and gather a bunch of items. Uh, this will increase the amount of items that you actually get. So very useful to make. Um, 
but this is our current set which is good for hunting so we'll start out with that now let's go over to forge and upgrade weapon this one is nice they split it up by the actual type so let's go to longsword since we're going to be using that for this tutorial blah 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 <laughs> And if you notice, there's this huge question mark. It just means that as we progress in the game, uh, whether it's the gathering hub or it's the village, I highly recommend, though, that you play the village quests because uh, they are easier and it does open up the story and sort of open up the town slower uh, than just jumping into the gathering hub. Uh, but these are all the weapons that we can forge right now in the game at our current status, our rank. If you notice, this is our current weapon, the Kamura Tree. This is a 50 uh, attack power with the yellow sharpness. And we can upgrade it with just one iron ore. So the game's not very, really telling us uh, this, but the game kind of wants you to upgrade your weapon really soon uh, before you start fighting large monsters. Um, we have some things here which are from monsters which we have not faced. Um, the thing that I want to call your attention to here is the iron ore tree. The iron katana is a fantastic weapon to start the game with. It only takes three iron ores, which we're going to grab in just a minute. And our attack goes from a Peasley 50 all the way up to 80, which is really nice. This has a little bit of more sharpness, but 60 attack, 80 versus 50, do the math. That is a big, 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 big difference. We do have a bone tree, which is 90, which is even more powerful if we gather some bones. Um, but the sharpness is even lower, so I find this to be a good middle ground. And the rest of these, again, will open up as we progress and play the game. So... Let's go ahead and do what the game wants, which is to gather some ore as we play the game. I think we're pretty much ready now uh, to go ahead and start playing. So again, just a refresher here. This is where we go to take on village quests. Uh, we can go back to the gathering hall to take on gathering hall quests. Generally all story stuff what, relating to the characters, um, upgrading the town, all that kind of stuff is going to be done through the village. It is sort of like a tutorial mode. It's not that difficult. Uh, so I recommend you start here. Uh, we have the item shop, and then we have our ability to craft stuff, either for our cats and dogs or for our hunter. So the first deal and the first thing I want us to do is to go on our first quest so we can open up the ability to actually hunt. So if we talk to Hinoa, we have an urgent quest, which is a learning the basics with Master Utsushi. So he's going to attempt to teach you everything I just took 40 minutes to do. He's going to try to do it in like five minutes, and it's going to be too much. <laughs> uh, Komitsu is just a fun little NPC. She actually doesn't have any functions in the game. Just talk to her and enjoy. So we're going to be uh, a good hunter, even though we're not doing any major hunting. I just want to get you in the habit. Uh, you always want to eat before you go out on a quest. So we'll go to the canteen, eat a meal. And for now, we can pay with points or we can pay with money. In generally, money is very hard to come by in this game uh, early on, so we'll play with points. And we can order Bunny Dango. Uh, you get a bunch of different choices. You can choose three. Um, it shows you all the different effects down below. The one on the upper left with that little Dango red mark is a daily skill. It means that it changes every time you go on a quest, and it's random. Sometimes there's some really interesting ones. Uh, sometimes there's not. For this one, we have... The money maker increases the amount of money we receive at the end of the quest. That sounds nice. Uh, speeds up sharpening, slightly increases health recovery from items and stuff like that. So yeah, there's some there's some good stuff to be had here. You can filter these things by attack boosters, defense boosters, um, utility bo boosters, and uh, stuff like that, and gathering. Obtains increases the quantity of honey when attempt. Yeah, let's do that. And we're not really going to be doing any other attacking. So um, it doesn't really matter what else we choose. We can actually register this uh, set here. Um, so as you play the game, you'll actually unlock a lot of new Dango with have some really powerful effects like, you know, raises your attack greatly and stuff like that. And we'll go ahead and we will order this. <laughs> Those cats in the background going crazy. This I am going to show because it's hard not to skip this. It's too cute. You can skip it with the B button though. But most of us, I think, enjoy watching this quite a bit. Huh? 
I do not recommend trying to eat like that in real life. It's a good way to get it stuck in your throat. <laughs> there we go. So we got our meal. We got an increase of 20 health and 20 stamina, which is great. It means uh, as we play the game, we'll get better dango, and we'll go all the way up to getting like 50 health and 50 stamina increase. Uh, so we'll be able to start the hunt at a much stronger condition. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're, we've already taken the quest so we can hit ZR to depart. And we'll go. We do get our loading scene. The cool thing is when you go into a quest, um, there's a location or a map. There's no more loading. Uh, so you only get loading at the very beginning of a quest, which is nice. I'm going to skip this, but make sure you watch it uh, when you play. Okay, so, so she wants to teach us how to move, as if we didn't know how to move already, right? With the left stick. Wow! You moved! That's amazing! You're such a good hunter! Blah, blah, blah. I will explain it. Um, so, at the beginning... Shut up! Leave me alone! So, at the start of every map, there is a tent. This is sort of like your base you can come back to. Uh, you won't get attacked here. When you enter the tent, you'll fully heal. Your sharpness will restore. And you're able to access your item box. If you need to restock on potions and stuff like that, you can do so. Um, you can even change your equipment. If you want to change to a different set or a different weapon, you can do all of that here. Um, and if we had buddies, we could actually change those. Uh, so the tent is very, very useful. And we can actually eat in here as well if we forgot to eat. Um, but this is the Shrine Ruins. This is sort of like the first map of the game. If you notice, it's very cloudy at first on the bottom left. That will clear up as we explore. So we're going to do a little bit of exploration this time. Um, but now we can start messing around with the wire bugs and really getting used to what we can do with these things. So let's go ahead and use what we learned uh, to get up to the top of that dog rock. I'm not going to explain these things quite yet. Uh, but sometimes there are great wire bugs. This is sort of like a shortcut. It allows us to jump up up there really fast that we can set up. But let's go ahead and use our wire bug. And remember, hold R to run. And we'll run up here. Whew. And we'll do it one more time. And we'll run up. And we'll do it again. And hold R to... Whoops. Hit A if you accidentally jump off in a direction you don't want to go. Let's do this nice and straight. If you notice, we actually don't actually need to have... Let me quick use this. We don't need a wire bug built up in order to run up a... So I keep, I keep using it. We don't need a wire bug active. Uh, th you know, they're not going to show me. My, my bugs are always going to be active. So you could just do the motion and you'll start running up a wall. You don't actually need to have a wire bug active. And here we have a mining outcrop at the top. So if you remember, we just needed some iron ore. So if we go ahead and hit A... Boom, we got one, three iron ores and an earth crystal. So we could already make that awesome weapon. I wish the game would have lured the players up here to teach them how to do that. But it doesn't. So let's use our thing, wire bug to zip around. Sometimes during maps, you'll find these other collection points. This is a unique item. So these are things that give you points. If you remember, we used our points to eat meals. So points are very useful. Uh, so definitely gathering stuff as you play. Uh, is a good way to earn some points. And we'll jump on down here. Uh, this is a good area if you want to practice using your wire bug some more. This is a good place to do it. And outside the tent, there's always a supply box. So the guild are not that stingy. They will give you some items to start the game. So if you notice, they give us some first aid meds. It's called a supply item, which means that we don't get to keep it. It's only there for the quest. Um, and we get some easy rations to get more stamina, which we'll, which we'll use. Some bow gun stuff if we're using a gun. Let's go ahead and eat our ration to get a lot more stamina. Generally, if you're playing online with other players, there'll be like enough for four people. There'll be like four rows. And pretty much everyone is trusted just to take theirs. So let's run down here. We'll actually slide down some of these cliffs. If you notice, this thing is glowing. So let's go ahead and gather it. What is this? This is an herb. If you remember, we had the combination. If you combine an herb into a potion, if we collect it, it automatically makes two potions for us. This game does all the crafting automatically. You can turn it off if you want, uh, but I highly recommend you just keep it on. Whee! And jump on down. 
Okay, so he wants to talk to us. Before we talk to him, there's something I want to show you. If you feel that the game is a little zoomed in and it's a little hard for you to keep track of stuff, press the press the uh, plus button to go over to options here. And there is a setting under camera at the very bottom where you can actually change the distance and pull out the camera, which is how I like to play. This allows you to see a lot more of what's going on. Uh, you can see more of the environment. You can see more when you're fighting a monster. I just find it very useful, personally. What is this? We have a Nullberry. We'll go ahead and pick that up. A whole bunch of really useful items. Sometimes you'll see these little bugs, and these are little free heals. So we can just get uh, rip their sack open and we get some nice little healing. We got some more accounting items here. So if you notice, the, the map is just littered with tons of items to collect. If we uh, press the minus button here, or hold it, sorry, we'll see a map. And if we press the R button, we can actually uh, circle through different stuff to see. So if we go to gathering, you'll start seeing all these icons popping up. Uh, obviously, we want to unlock all the maps so we can see everything, but if you set it to gathering and then you press B to get out, hold down L like you're going to change your item. If you notice, the map on the bottom left zooms in and shows us the location of different stuff, which is very useful. This is for gathering. Uh, we could turn it on for everything, but it would be very, very confusing because there's so much. <laughs> and we get an herb. Um, so that's good. So let's go ahead and uh, should we talk to him or should we open up the map a little bit more? Uh, let's talk to him for a second, actually. So here he's going to... It took me 20 minutes to teach you about the wire bug. He's going to teach you it in just three seconds. ZL and X. Of course, we know that we can use ZR as well. We don't have to just use X. But we will humor the game. Wow, you're a pro! <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, so now they're going to teach us how to use our cats and dogs. So cats are automatic. There's nothing to do with a cat. They will automatically follow you, uh, and they will automatically attack the monster. They will start doing healing stuff for you. The one that you can interact with is your Palamute, the dog. Um, with the D-pad, you can go over here, and it's always faster to do this, but you can do Let Me Ride, uh, and that will allow the dog to uh, come under you, and you can start running on it. Or if you're nearby, you can just hold down the A button, and you can ride on the dog as well. Now, you can just ride like this normally by using the L stick, or you can press and hold R, and you'll run. If you notice, the cool thing is, is we're not using any stamina at all. We can even eat a ration. We can use a potion. I'm going to waste one here. We can even sharpen our weapon. We can do all sorts of things on our dog. So if we're running away, or if we're running towards a monster, we can get there really fast without using stamina while doing all these things. We could press ZR to do a little jump. <laughs> Whee! And we can hold ZL. Actually, don't hold it. Just press it. Boom! And you get a dash. So yes, yeah, so we get a dash. And if you do it while you're turning, you will drift. I know that's been a dream for people to drift with a the dog. There you go. It's Mario Kart with dogs. So go ahead and just have fun riding on the dog. Get used to it. It's pretty fun. Uh, but the dog is basically used for traversal. Um, you're not going to be using this in battle that much unless you want to hop on him really fast to sharpen your weapon and get away. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, um, you'll sometimes see these things. Um, these are endemic life that will give you uh, sort of a temporary buff. Um, so learning the maps is very good. This is reduce the amount of stamina we need to use. So let's do some evades here. You can see our stamina usage. It's pretty good. If we go ahead and hit the pepper sex, um, now it takes less stamina to do it. Some weapons use stamina in order to do certain attacks. Um, so this can be a very, very useful um, sort of buff, depending on your weapon. So we got here, we got some needle berries, which makes ammo for a bow gunner. One thing that's really nice to keep an eye out for is honey early in the game. So if you notice, we have a honey thing here. Honey is mixed with potions to make mega potions, which heal us by quite a bit. So we grabbed the honey and automatically crafted three mega potions. That's good. 
Now, the game is going to teach us about this in just a second, but I'll just teach you about it now. But press start and go down to equipment. And if you know, actually don't even do that. If you go down and you see a thing called hunting pedalace, it's something that we have equipped here. Uh, you'll earn new pedalaces as you play the game. Uh, the elder will give them to you. What well, these are, there's these little birds. They're called spirit birds. Let me get my camera out so we can see it. They're cute little things, aren't they? It's a green spirit bird. <laughs> Take some pictures. Uh, anytime you go near these things, they'll just come up to you and give you their little power. These are called perma buffers because their buff lasts for the entire hunt. Even if you die and you cart and you go back to camp and then you have to go back and fight the monster, you still keep all these buffs. So press the start button again and we'll go down to equipment, hunting pedal ace. So each time we grab a green spirit bird, we get plus three to our maximum health. And we can do this up to 10 times to get a health increase of 30. For stamina, every time we grab a yellow bird, we'll get three stamina and we can go all the way up to 30 stamina. And for attack, we can grab red spirit birds up to five times to get plus five attack. Early in the game, when you're only running with like, you know, 60 attack, 80 attack, plus five is quite good. And there are some defense ones, which are orange, uh, which will uh, increase our defense up to 10. So these are just little buffs that will help you throughout the hunt um, and really help encourage exploration. So as you play the game, uh, as you go up, you will collect these things. Let's see our health goes, bloop, ones up a little bit. Let's go ahead and grab that defense one up here. So we'll just jump up the hill, run up it. That gives us uh, some extra defense. This gives us some extra attack. So all these nice little buffs just for going off the beaten path. Let's go ahead and mine this outcrop. Get some more ore. Yeah, early on in the game, you just want to collect everything. Um, there's no reason not to collect items. Uh, everything is going to come in handy uh, much later in the game. So go ahead and just collect everything you can find. And I think a good objective now is just run around the map uh, and just try to first unlock all of it because right now it's all cloudy. Um, and then you can see everything that's around. There's so much to gather in this map. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Got some more bamboo shoots. Heck, we even got some bugs, which sometimes they make, they make items and stuff. So yeah, uh, really fun. Uh, I don't want to give you a full tour of this map in this video because that would take a long time. Uh, but definitely have fun running around the, uh, the map. Okay, so let's run up and complete this tutorial. So grab some more herbs. So now he's going to teach us about the spirit birds. This is kind of a way um, I want to mention here that Capcom added in a difficulty slider. In general, um, if you just pick up birds on your way to a target monster, that's the normal difficulty for the game. But if you go out of your way and take time to collect some more birds, it makes the game easier. Um, I don't think you'll have problems during the village quest because they're pretty easy to begin with. But if you're ever having a hard time, uh, you can go off the beaten path and grab some birds and it will power you up and make the game easier. But you're never required, so don't feel like you have to do this every single hunt, because that would be quite tiring. Oh, we got some bones. Let's go ahead and pick these up. You'll spend the first few hours just gathering stuff. It's really great. Mushrooms. Okay, Utsushi, we got up here. Oh, he wanted us to ride our dog up here. Oh, well. <laughs> so he wanted us to ride our dog so we can see uh, that we can attack with our dog so if we're on the dog and we press X it's a little attack but it's like really weak um, you're generally not going to be using this to fight anything in the game you're basically just going to press B to jump off your dog and start attacking but we'll go ahead and ride the dog up here dash Pew. Oh, a pack of Izuchi. Now he wants me to take down small monsters. These are small, so um, they're not going to take too long to hit. If you notice, monsters in this game, large or small, do not have health bars. Small monsters will die really fast, so it doesn't really matter. Um, wow, okay. Just use our X button attack here. And then we'll start doing our spirit combo. Boom. 
Is he almost? Oh, he's dead. The dog killed him for us. So we killed our monsters. When you kill a small monster, you can carve. Go over to their body and press the A button with your weapon put away. And you're able to carve them and get a material. Woohoo! We got a pelt. These are used to craft all sorts of things such as armor and weapons. A tail. Uh, it's random what you get, so I'll show you how you know that. So if you press the start button and go over to the hunter's notes, this is very useful actually. Go over, we haven't hunted any large monsters, but go to small, and you'll see the Izuchi. And if we press the R button, we can go to materials. Uh, we have a 52% chance of getting a tail, 33% chance of a pelt, and 15% chance of getting something. We haven't gotten it yet. I think it's a sharp claw. Um, but this is very useful. Um, check out your hunter notes here if you ever want to learn about things, where to find them, what they do. Uh, it's a very useful guide. Okay, I think that's the end of his tutorial. Here is a wild wire bug. You can notice we can pick it up and we get a third one, uh, which is really cool. Um, this thing will only last for a certain amount of time. Uh, we won't be able to keep it. But if you remember, we do have that uh, whisper thing on our set, which will allow us to use it for a longer time. Woohoo! So we can use three in a row. That's nice. Okay, this is a good area to get lost in, so I won't do this. So let's just uh, quickly zip around and talk to him to end the quest. So he wants to teach us how to fast travel. So as long as we're not in combat against monsters, which you'll know because there's like a battle theme song which starts, hold down the minus button, press A twice, and you can zip over to your main camp. There are ways to unlock a uh, sub-camp in each map, which will allow you to move around really fast, which I'll show you in the next quest. Uh, but now we've warped back, we can go to tent, we can restock, and we'll talk to him when we finish our quest! So congratulations. That's a lot to take in, I know. Um, but we've now managed to do our first quest, so congratulations. But I know what you're thinking. This is Monster Hunter, I want to hunt monsters. Why are you having me... This is not Gather Hunter. This is Monster Hunter. So we'll go ahead and get to that. All Monster Hunter games tend to start out with Gathering Quest. Um, it can be very anticlimactic uh, for someone who just bought the game and is looking forward to just getting in there and hunting stuff. Um, but that's kind of how it works. So at the end of any request, you get a thing called Quest Rewards. Uh, this will be monster parts or items if it's not a hunting quest. And then your cats can gather items. Uh, so while the dog is awesome for running around and getting around places really fast, the cats are really good because they will gather items. So uh, I do recommend using both one cat and one dog. But if you really want to, you can uh, change it up if you want. Get our rewards. Loading. Okay. So Fugen has a bubble over his head. He actually has a subquest. He wants us to make a mega potion, which we actually did in our tutorial, which is good. So he's going to talk to us. He's going to say, hey, I want you to learn how to make a potion. Um, yeah, so he wants us. Oh, no, he wants us to make a well done steak. Okay, I'll do that next time. Sorry. And he'll give us some potions. It's going to say we completed it. I think it's because the game gives you a well done steak in the welcome pack. Um, so it automatically clears this quest for us, but I'll show you how to actually do that. Thanks, dude. Okay, now at the end of every major uh, milestone in the game, for example, we did our urgent quest. We are now a level one hunter in the village. And that will give us access to the one star quests. Oops. So if we go over here to village quests, we have level one, and we have a bunch of quests here. And we can choose to go on them. There's uh, 50 minutes, we can go in there, we clear the objective, and we get some rewards. Uh, we do also have some new options. We have training quests, uh, which will tell you, this is the one we just did. There's one that teaches us about riding large monsters, but we haven't even fought a large monster yet, so I'm not sure I would recommend doing that right away. Or how to capture a monster. It, these are very specific, um, so we were not going to worry about these right now. Uh, but if you notice, we have a new thing called here called the Expedition Tour. 
And here is a place that we can go and we can just explore. We can gather items, we can hunt monsters. There's no time limit whatsoever. Um, we don't get any quest rewards, so if we kill any monsters, we're only going to get the stuff that we carved from them. But it's kind of nice to go in there and you don't. it doesn't matter if you die, you, know, you can try, try again. Uh, and after a certain time, monsters will leave and, and run away and stuff like that. So this is very fun if you're starting the game. Uh, I would recommend doing this for just sort of clearing out, you know, filling up the map and also fighting some monsters. It's very nice. But likewise, we can go on a first star quest. Now, if you notice, the village, again, starts out kind of slow. There's only four quests, and there's all these small monsters and gathering mushrooms and stuff. It's not fighting big monsters yet. That's going to be the next step. Up below, it says key quest completed, zero out of two. So this red mark here means that it is a key quest. Um, the game will give you a certain amount of quests, and it's up to you to choose which ones you want to do. So for this one, it's given us a choice of three different quests, and we just need to do two of them. And that will unlock our ability to take an urgent quest and go up to two-star quests. And that will unlock all the monsters. One thing noting here, if we go ahead and we just zip over to the Gathering Hall. Uh, the Gathering Hall doesn't do this at all. The Gathering Hall only has three levels for low rank hunters. Um, so you can actually already go in and just fight monsters. This is really good if you're familiar with the game uh, or if you just really want to hunt large monsters really fast and get gear. Um, but if you notice, like there's already tons of large monsters to fight. Um, but again, these are harder than if you face them in the village. So I do not recommend you just running in here and fighting these things because they're going to have more health. Uh, they're going to be harder to take down, although these quests do scale for single player. Um, they're just not as easy as the village quest. So uh, let's not get too eager. Uh, but if you do notice, we do have access expedition tour to a new map called the Frost Islands. So the gathering hub is kind of a way that you can access areas faster than the village, uh, which could sometimes lead to the ability to upgrade a weapon a little bit faster if you're also messing around with the gathering hub. Uh, so if you're really curious, you can do some gathering tours around here. It's kind of fun. But generally, the monsters here are probably going to kick your butt um, right now because we don't have anything. So let's not mess with uh, the gathering hub for now. Let's go back to the village. So let's go ahead and craft a good weapon now that we have the iron ore. So if we go to craft weapon, longsword. If you notice, it's green because we can upgrade it. Or we can go down here and we've got all these different things we can craft. We can make the... Bone weapon, which actually is not a bad choice. Or the iron katana. I'm going to choose iron just because it has more sharpness and we don't have to sharpen as much. Let's forge that. Equip now, yes. If you notice, uh, we did unlock the bone scythe weapon. That's another one with 90. That's really nice. Um, it just needs a sharp claw, three of them. So if we went back and we started defeating those small little uh, Izuchi monsters and we carved them, we can randomly get... A sharp claw, they're kind of rare, but if we get three of them, we can make this weapon, which is very nice. But I think we're good. I think the iron katana is a good way to start the game. If we go to armor, we can upgrade armor because he gave us some armor spheres. It was very nice of him. If you notice, our defense on this scene is only one, which is really, really bad. Uh, if we go over to, let's say this, and we use an armor sphere, we can level it up to three. So let's go ahead and use an armor sphere on three different pieces. And that will raise, uh, we'll go from five defense to 11. So yeah, that's double the defense we just had. So that's a big difference. If we go to forge armor, we still have our choices here. Uh, these are all items from small monsters we can find in that map. Uh, but we're going to stick with our Kimura set. Okay, so we have a pretty good weapon now. Uh, so we can go on a hunt. So we have two choices. We can try just running into the gathering hall and getting our butts kicked, or we can go ahead and do the gathering quest here and start unlocking actual hunting quests. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, just because we, I'll show you this at a much more faster pace. So let's start here with the roly poly lanterns. I'm not gonna eat. I just, I wanted to show you how to eat before, uh, but because this is not a hunting quest, it's not gonna matter so much. So let's just depart. And we'll go through this one much faster. I, I guarantee you, we'll be hunting soon enough. I know you're probably getting anxious to go fight a monster. 
I would be too. <laughs> I do hope that this is uh, helpful for you guys because uh, the game does teach you all of this. It's just uh, people find it a little hard to follow sometimes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We, it's, yeah. So for a gathering quest, which there's very few of in this game, they'll actually mark them on the map for you, which is very nice. Let's go to our items though, like hold L and press Y twice to go to the barbecue split. If you have, um, where's this, raw meat in your inventory, you can use the barbecue split. It's just an item that pops up and there's a little cookie mini game. And if you wait for the last moment when the, quest, the song ends and your meat turns brown, you can get a well done steak. So let's go ahead and cook one because we do have a quest for, to do that. That's a rare steak that was done too early. Let me turn on the volume so I can actually hear this. There we go. So it, it changes the color right at the very end there. And that's when you want to pull it. Otherwise you get a burnt steak if you go too long, which you don't want. There we go. Well done steaks are awesome because they will max out your stamina. If you just eat one, watch our stamina. Pshoo! <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this great wire bug. There is a guy in town where we're going to talk to after this quest uh, who will give you these great wire bugs. He has different quests and different requests for you to do. A great wire bug is a permanent shortcut. Uh, some of these, like this one, is already set up. There's a whole bunch of other ones uh, throughout the map, which I'll show you, which you have to earn these great wire bugs to set up. But once you set them up, you can always use them. Uh, some of them are just like this. It's it's kind of useful. Woo! Throws us all the way up here. So it's very, very useful. Let's go ahead and gather because we know about this one up here. Um, but yeah, they're very, very useful. So definitely use them if you get some. So we want to drop on down here and we see on our map, uh, we have a marking here for this item. This is the Shimmering Red Berry, so we need to collect these Fire Lanterns. That is our quest this time. So let's just quickly get this over with. I don't want to uh, to take too much time to do this. So I'm going to show you just how to use... Uh, how Traversal is going to look once you get used to using the Wire Bug. Um, it's very, very fun. And we're also going to fill out some of this map as well while we're at it. Run, doggy, run! This little vine up here. Cool thing about dogs is they can run up vines without any stamina. You just all the way up. It's kind of nice. Let's gather some of these items. Uh, they're pretty useful. You'll also occasionally run into this thing called Endemic Life. This is a whale nard. If we pick it up, uh, we can use these things like items. Um, for this one, this is not a hunting quest, so we can't use it. But if we go ahead and use it like an item, it'll just scream. And it will attract a large monster to come near us. Yes. Can have its, uh, there's several ways that it can be useful. We can climb all the way up this mountain to the top. Uh, do that on your own time. It's very fun. If you notice on the map right now, we're in a dark gray area on the map. These are areas where large monsters can't come, so you're safe. There may be some small little monsters like those guys over there, but for the most part, you're absolutely safe. So these are safe areas. You can go to heal, you can go to gather, explore, uh, collect spirit birds, endemic life, whatever you want, and you don't have to worry. The lighter gray areas are the areas in which large monsters will roam, and that is where the fights will take place. So we're just going to take a small little detour through here. Just want to fill up this map a little bit here. You might recognize this from the uh, trailer, uh, this area down here. So let's go ahead and fill out our map. We don't actually need to, but let's do it anyways, just so you can see the whole thing. So you can see already how convenient the dog is for just running around. It's very nice.
Then over here we have a safe area inside here uh, with lots of different places where we can gather stuff. Find lots of very useful items. There are these little bushes here. Um, if you hit them, they do have spirit birds inside. It's kind of random which one you get. But let's go ahead and fade slash to... Could have, we got a defense one. Um, but these scenes are nice. If you run across them, go ahead and hit them with your weapon, and it will give you some extra spirit birds. Watch out for these cats. They're little thieving uh, cats, and they will steal stuff from you. <laughs> we have some other very useful endemic life, uh, like this little snail. If we pick up the Escurgo, the Escurgo and we place it on the ground, it creates this huge healing mist. Uh, that will heal you and other hunters for a long period of time, so very useful. It's very nice. These are one of those areas I was talking about where you can set up a large wire bug if you have one. We don't, but this is a shortcut that will open up. Whee! So I'm going to show you where the first sub camp is because I want you guys to unlock it because it will make your start of the game more enjoyable, I think. Let's pick up another wire bug. So we can use that. Let's get in our dog. Okay, so what we want to do is get up here. So let's go ahead and use our wire bugs. We're going to run up holding the R button. We can't run no more. We'll go ahead and hit A. Get, regain a little stamina. Press B, jump. Wire bug back on. Continue running up. And we're able to get up here. And this is the area where the sub camp is located. So next time we go back to town, they'll give us a sort of a delivery quest or a request in order to set this thing up. And we'll do that. Get some fire lanterns. And now let's end the quest. So let me quick get the rest of these fire lanterns. Whoops. So we got some here. We got some more up here. Oh, it wasn't quite enough. Okay. We'll finish off by going over here. I forgot we had wire bugs. We can just run around. It's it's very fast. Here we go. Here's our last one. Hopefully it'll give us the one we need. Yeah, we got eight. Good. So we have now completed our first major quest. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a beautiful game, isn't it? Um, if you want to skip the animation at the end of a quest, you can actually just hang. And if you're hanging, um, then it will skip the animation. Just makes things go by a little faster. Uh, but I do like the, the screenshot of the zooming in on your hunter, because sometimes it'll show you playing with your cat and dog, and it's really, it's really nice. So we'll hit take all. So almost an hour and a half in, and we haven't hunted a large monster. I know that is the bane of the beginning of Monster Hunter. Well, we're almost there, I promise you. Okay, so now we'll talk to him. He's got a bubble. What do you want from us? So he says, oh, you found a sub camp. Great. So he's going to set it up, and so he's going to give us a request. He wants us to slay eight Izuchi in order to unlock the sub camp. We can do that for you. And yeah, so let's go ahead and go back to the quest counter. If you notice, we keep get, we keep completing these optional subquests, which is great. We're getting armor spheres uh, and we're getting points. So just keep going in here and making sure to um, uh, choose them. So we're gonna choose mushrooms. Yeah, let's do that. Um, what was I thinking about doing here? No, nah, nothing. Sorry. Brain fart. It happens. So let's go ahead and we can do the mushrooms or we can slay eight Jagras. This one we can do, but it won't actually uh, progress us, even though it kind of stinks because if we do that, we get the sub camp. So we'll get the sub camp as we do the mushrooms. Since we're going to be hunting some small monsters, it doesn't really matter, but let's go over here and eat. 
It's just good etiquette to eat before you go out. We'll pay with points. We'll just order the usual. I think our last one works. Press B to skip the scene. I know some of you are gasping the fact that I would skip it. And let's head out. We want to hunt a monster. We also have armor spheres, which we can use to buff up some more of our armor, which we have not done yet. Usually in Monster Hunter, the village quest will only take about, I want to say seven to eight minutes. Um, if you're new to the game, it may take 10 um, if you're hunting a monster. Of course, if you want to explore, you've got plenty of time to do that as well. Um, but if you ever end up taking longer than that, I think it's a good sign that you are just out spec You should upgrade your weapon, uh, or maybe you don't have upgraded armor. It's kind of an indication because village quests shouldn't really be taking more than 10 minutes if you're just attacking a monster. In fact, that, they should take much less. I think a good rule of thumb for a lot of us who are sort of used to the game is that our village quests are like seven minutes and the online hub, the get, oh, not online, sorry, the gathering hub uh, is generally like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so they're definitely harder and they're longer. So we want to gather the mushrooms, but I also want to kill Izuchi's um, because we have that subquest for the camp. So let's go over here and find some and deal with them. We'll go ahead and carve them as well. We may as well. Those sharp claws and stuff like that will come in handy if we can get some. There's one. If you notice, the game is very nice. It keeps track and lets us know when we're completing objectives, which is cool. There's only five more to kill. Ooh, another sharp claw. We're getting lucky here. We might actually might want to go to the moon weapon, actually. Wow. Luck hits us. Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's gather some mushrooms. Uh, I'm going to... So we'll go up here. This quest is basically trying to teach us how to go up the mountain. Um, which is actually a really good thing to do. Hopefully we don't clear the quest right away. I do want to take care of all the different, uh... Izuchi before we clear it. So we do want to clear that subquest. Why are you jumping up there? <laughs> Whiff. Okay. Goodbye, Izuchi. Good thing is that when you pick up an item, uh, it respawns four minutes later. Uh, so if you're going around gathering stuff like ores or mushrooms um, and you just can't seem to find other ones or get any more, just wait four minutes and it will respawn. Small, small monsters will also respawn as well. Uh, so the game is pretty uh, lax in that department. This whole middle area, you can spend literally an hour exploring it. It's really neat. Uh, getting used to all the different jumping and all the different techniques to get to the top. Okay, so the next one we gather is probably going to clear the quest. I don't want to do that yet until we uh, clear our objective with the Izuchi. So let me go ahead and run forward here and see if I can find some. I'm going backwards again. See, even I'm getting lost. And I've done this map hundreds of times at this point. Let's go ahead and grab these bones. Unfortunately, the game does not allow you to filter for small monsters. Again, if you hold X, you can see all the different stuff here. We can search by birds. We could search by endemic life, which are those useful uh, buffs that we can get. We can search by gathering. We can even go in here um, and press X and anything that we've found before, for example, like um, we've found Ivy before, we can filter it just to show it. Um, so if you're looking for a very specific item, 
you can actually filter just to find out where it is, which is very, very useful. So honey or blue mushrooms and parashrooms. So yeah, very useful, but you can't um, filter by small monster, unfortunately. So we'll just have all the gathering up here. I'm looking down here. I want to find some Izuchi. Uh, where can I find some? I think the next place with some Izuchi is down here. To the right. Uh, I'll, actually, I should explain what these guys do. So these bomb... 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 Beach? I, I can't remember their name. I'm sorry. When you hit them, they explode because they've got gas built up. And if you aim them like golf cars, like say there's a monster right in front of you and you hit them, boom, they'll go flying and they will actually do blast damage to a monster. It's really funny. And then they will deflate. We can actually kill them as well. They are considered small monsters. And we can carve them for materials. Bombadji, there it is. So I was thinking of the Japanese Bambanjina, I think is the name. Let's see if we can get some more Izuchi to spawn. I think we have a spawn over here. There we go. Spirit attacks are just really powerful, so I just... They're really good to just use by default if you've got the spirit energy built up. And they're very wide reaching as well, which I know can annoy some players online because you can hit your teammates online and interrupt their attacks. Luckily, as you progress in the game, there is a uh, armor skill that you can get called uh, flinch free, which will make sure that you don't uh, you don't get flinched out of your attacks by anybody. So do be mindful of other hunters if you are playing with others. We just need one more Izuchi, so let's go back to the very beginning. I think they probably respawned by this point. And if they have, then we'll complete that subquest and then we'll get our mushroom. Yeah, here they are. They've respawned, so that's good. Unga bunga. Okay, well, we may as well kill these guys as well. Because the next monster we're going to fight is their leader. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Overkill. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, carve these boys. Okay, at this point, our mushrooms have already respawned. So instead of going to the other mushroom spots, I'm just going to gather from that first one we went to and quickly end this quest because I think we're ready. But yeah, that's the last gathering quest we're going to be doing in this video. So I do hope that you uh, go on some more, go on some expeditions, have fun just gathering stuff and really learning the map. Um, it's quite enjoyable. There we go. So we got our main objective complete. We'll return in 20 seconds. If a small cat manages to steal some items from you and you're not able to kill it and get it back, you can always go back here to their camp and regather stuff that they stole from you. It's not such a big deal, but it is kind of a cute little feature in the game. Let's gather stuff. Good boy. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. A large monster. The worst news ever. <laughs> so she is having some problems. Uh, they have uh, a great Izuchi is tearing up the shrine ruins. Well, exaggeration. But anyways, it's uh, getting in the middle of her trade route. So she's asking you to take down this big monster. So this is going to be our first one. Let's quick talk to him because this will unlock our sub camp, which is great. Thank you. Very useful. And then they issue us an urgent quest. Once we clear this urgent quest, we will be a two-star hunter. Um, this is where... Wow, we cleared a bunch of these. So let's go ahead and choose some new ones. 
Yeah, so we got an urgent quest up here, uh, which is against a great Izuchi, which is our first large monster. Once we do that, we'll unlock the level 2 quests, which will be lots of large monsters, and we'll be on our way to be a monster hunter. So this is really our, our final gateway into the game. Let's go over here, though. Before we do anything, let's check out armor. If you notice, we have nothing we can make here yet. Um, but we can upgrade because we have gotten uh, some armor spheres. So let's go ahead and use some of those. I think people who don't interact with the system are going to have a harder time because their defense will be significantly lower than what ours is. If we go over to weapon, we could actually forge this, which is 90. It's very tempting, isn't it? Or this one right here. Let's see here. Oh, that is so tempting. Do we do it or do we not? Hmm. Let's not. I, I, in normal cases, I would say let's do it. Um, I just want us to be able to, I don't, I can't recall whether or not we need to use those sharp claws for something in the future. Um, and it's not a big enough difference now that I want to make the commitment. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Hopefully that'll be the right move. Um, don't forget though that we did craft, um, let's see here, our iron sword. And when we did that, we got some iron scraps. Uh, which we can use to make some buddy equipment. So, for example, our dog here. If you notice, we have ore scraps from uh, crafting our ore stuff. And we can go ahead and make weapons and armor for them using those. So, pretty much as you make stuff for your hunter, you'll get scraps that you can do for your dog. Um, so, if we look at this one, it's 50 attack for the dog. If we go up, that's 65. Uh, so, 65 is really good. Let's go ahead and equip him. Let's give him some armor as well. Let's go over to our cat. The cat's got a bunch of options, huh? The ore as well. We've got this acorn set. Oh, that's cute. So, uh, seven, five. So yeah, the ore seems better, but we're gonna give it a good weapon. And then we don't have any more s scraps. So if you run out of scraps, you could actually just trade off materials that you have for scraps. So, for example, the ore, we can go over here to um, our iron ore. And we can go ahead and trade one of these to get uh, a scrap. You generally are not really going to have to worry about doing this. Um, but for the sake of the tutorial, I want to show you guys that it is important to keep your cats uh, equipped. And same with your dogs. It makes a good difference. So let's go ahead and enjoy decking them out. Let's see a preview of what these all look like. There's some really cute outfits as we get into further in the game. Okay, so we've got their stuff all set. We're all fully upgraded. We've got a good weapon. We are ready to kick some butt. Let's go ahead and make sure our item box is uh, sorted. So this is a very important thing I want you guys to do uh, before you start the game. So let's go over to transfer items. Let's go ahead and just put everything away. Press the A button. And we're going to make an item set. So... Instead of having to go to restock items every time, if we make an item set, we can just uh, register it and then pick it up every time. So hit the minus button to sort. We're going to grab potions. We're going to grab mega potions. Uh, we'll grab antidotes for now in case we get poisoned. Um, yeah, we'll grab null berries even though we're not going to be using them for quite some time. We'll grab some well done steaks. Some other very useful items, but I don't really think we need them. I think this is a good place to start. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, some of these are really useful items to do as you like, but this is a good uh, standard set. So let's go to item loadouts, press the X button, and that will save it. Uh, if you're a bow gunner, or if you decide to do other weapons, you'll have other items that you'll want to keep in there, uh, but just keep that in mind. Crafting list is cool. We can go through here and see all the different stuff that you can make. Lots of crafting in this game. And there is layered armor if you get the DLC or the amiibos. Uh, we won't mess with that right now. Okay, so anytime we want to just restock our items, we just go over to items, item loadouts, and press A. And boom, it stocks us up. We are going to eat because we are going on a hunt against a large monster. So let's go eat. So 
So this is good. Prevents you from getting knocked in your butt. That probably is a good idea. Uh, increases recovery from... Uh, increase, sometimes decreases damage taken. That's good. And we'll do the calculator because we want to have points. We're basically eating, though, for the 20 increase in health and stamina. Uh, that's the most important part, I think. Okay, I think we are ready to go on a hunt. Urgent quest, the great Izuchi, the great pain. Now, the thing about this monster is it's a big Izuchi. It basically just has a few different attacks, which we'll go through. Uh, but we definitely want to attack its tail. As in this game, large monsters, you can break the parts in their body. And when you do, you get items. And those items are used to craft different uh, weapons and armor. So it's a very fun uh, aspect of Monster Hunter is breaking parts on their body. So we get a cool intro. I won't spoil for you guys, so make sure to watch that. And here we are up against the Great Izuchi at night. Now if we notice there's a little question mark, we can actually use our sub camp to get right next to him already. So let's go ahead and do that since we have our sub camp ready. And what I want to do first is just observe the monster. I think is my general advice to people uh, in this game. We'll switch over to Mega Potions. My best advice to people usually is just take the time to observe the monster because although this is a real live action fight, you can kind of think of it like a turn-based thing. Uh, monsters have big attacks in which they sort of telegraph and they show you what they're going to do. You let them do their attack and then you take your attack and it's kind of like taking turns. But once you know what a monster can do, uh, it's much easier. I like the target camera. If you press in the R stick, it targets to a spot. And you can just tap the L button at any time. And it will target on the monster, which I find very useful. So let's hit him just to get him engaged. Oosh. Ooh. And if you notice here, we have wire fall. So if you ever get hit on your butt, you can use a wire bug by holding Z, L, and B to quickly zip out of the way and out of trouble. So let's get hit again. So I could show you that. In general, you do not want to use wire fall towards a monster. Like you can use it to jump, jump back into action and kick its butt. Don't do it. Um, you're going to get yourself killed. So if you do use it, make sure you do it to run away. So let's observe him and see his attacks. This guy is a punk. He likes to fight with his two buddies, the Izuchis. These teens have a lot of health. Uh, so they are going to be hard to take advantage of to, to kill. So let's see what he does. So he has a tail. So he winds up. He does his tail attacks, and the game will warn you before they, he does it. That does a lot of damage. It's kind of like my turn to hit him. Now he's going to do his forward hit. What else do, does he have of its sleeve? Spit at me, right at me. So if you notice right now, if, as long as we're not straight on him, uh, we won't get hit by that attack or the spit attack that he does does have a single tail swipe and he has a claw swipe <laughs> we're not taking a lot of damage because we upgraded our armor slams his tail now this is a great opening look at that we could just smash that tail in so that's what we're going to do next time he tries to hit us with that we're going to start attacking and we're going to smash that tail good thing about having pets is that they will distract the monster so we can break his head and his tail so let's go ahead and do that just do our spirit combo since it's nice and big oh and we got interrupted that's a shame I'm not going to try to hunt particularly good I'm just gonna hunt normal okay so we got white that's good Go after that tail and the monster is running away so you'll notice this is the thing that happens monsters will run away uh, and they'll go to different areas they are living beasts they do not have life gauges um, you will notice though um, when they're near death the game will tell you you'll see them limping away and stuff like that that's good let's pick up this thunder beetle this is a very very useful item that will allow us to stun a monster if we hit it and the thing is sort of on uh, being electrified, if we hit it enough times, we'll knock it out. Which is really fun, because usually knocking out monsters is exclusive to weapons like the hammer or the hunting horn. But now we'll be able to do it. Just charging up. So we'll hit him in the face. Get 
whiff. So he's down. That's a great opportunity. Let's go over to the tail. Really want to break this thing. And we knocked it out. Hitting the head will also help when he's in Thunderblight. Okay, there's the tail. That's great. Sometimes a, a part takes two times to break, but this one I think we can see it's already broken. There's some some scarring on it. So let's hit the face. There's that, the face. We could pick up some drop items. Drop items will stay on there for whoa, watch out, he's winding up. <laughs> we'll stay up there for some quite some time. Uh, so we can pick those up. It's risky to carve during a hunt, um, but you can do it. So he's calling in for some more people to come help him. So yeah, even killing the small little Izuchi, they're just going to keep coming back. So anytime during a battle, if you want to, you could just ride on your dog. It's very convenient for getting safe and sharpening your weapon. Uh, or also taking in a potion. It's going to do a big tail slam. Oosh. Watch out. Oh. Now, normally that would do a lot of damage, but we've upgraded our armor, so we're pretty good. If you notice that he has sort of like the sting coming out of his mouth, that means that he is enraged. And now he is exhausted, so after a while, monster will use up all their stamina and become exhausted this is your time to do some real big damage uh, because they're going to be moving very slow um, they're going to be very uh, not very nimble um, and they're going to be very easy to take advantage of so let's go ahead and do some big damage as we have our opportunity try not to whiff like that izuchi is a very tutorial monster so he may be a little Underwhelming, you may have been expecting more of a, a really hard fight. If you notice on the upper right, he's now got a blue, like I'm almost dead icon. That means that the monster is near death. Um, there are ways to capture monsters, there are ways to kill monsters just by killing them. And the items that you get from them are different, but for now we're just going to kill. Oosh. No, he's running away, let's quick sharpen our weapon. It's good uh, to always make sure you have sharpness. And we'll go ahead and finish him off. He will take uh, significantly a little bit longer if you do uh, Great Izuchi in the Gathering Hub, even if you're playing alone. But the rewards are the same. Uh, so definitely take advantage of the fact that low rank uh, is the village. But once you progress far enough in the game, there's a thing called high rank. Um, and that there is no choice for in the village. You have to do that in the Gathering Hub. Whoops, facing the wrong way. This will probably do him in. Yeah. You press B to cancel out. Um, all the other monsters will generally scatter and leave. They're like, I'm out of here. And when you kill a large monster, you get three carves. And there is a bunch of different items that you can get. It's kind of RNG at this point, what you get. It's random. Uh, but hopefully we'll get some good items. And then in the quest rewards, we'll also get a bunch of items as well. Not only for clearing the quest and beating him, but also breaking the parts. Uh, for example, if you break the head, uh, there is an item you can get. If you break the tail, there's an item you can get. And for some monsters, there's other stuff like breaking their back. Um, you'll be able to check all this out in the Hunter's Notes. Let's go to Hunter Notes. Large monsters. Great Izuchi. We can see its hit zone, so we can see where it's uh, weak and what it's weak to. We can see its ailments and materials, um, and we can see stuff like capture rewards or break rewards. So we know now that we can, uh, Rogan probably can break its hide, we can break its tail, and stuff like that. So check out your hunter notes, it'll tell you all the different uh, materials you can get and how to get them, and how best to get them. But in general, just break parts, kill monsters, and you'll do just fine. So here we go, our quest rewards, we get uh, some hides, some pelts. Uh, bones. What we're hoping for is a tail. Um, so if we go down here to broken part rewards, we got a hide 
in a sec. So we got kind of unlucky. Uh, we broke the tail, but we didn't get any. Um, so we didn't get the tail, which I really want. This is kind of the uh, the thing of Monster Hunter. It's called the desire sensor. It's when you want something, you don't get it. Um, but yeah, I'll show you why I wanted to get the tail. But it's it's not always guaranteed. There is some randomness involved. But that's the fun, right? As you hunt a monster over and over again, you get better at them. Uh, and then you'll be able to take them down in half the time. Okay, so we are now a two-star hunter. Everybody wants to talk to us, of course. Um, because now the game has opened up. If we go and we see... Let's make sure we choose another optional. If we go to Village Quest, we now have a bunch of different quests. This is looking more like the Gathering Hub, right? So we have Arzuros, who's a really fun monster. Uh, great... Uh, what other monsters? we got the Baggy, Lagombi. We've got our great Izuchi again, which I think we're going to do. Uh, so yeah, some cool stuff. Now let's go over to the armory and see the new stuff that we can craft. As you go up in level, for example, a star 2 hunter to a star 3 to a star 4, uh, you will unlock new stuff to create. So if we go over here to armor, you'll notice we now have a, we have a leather armor we can now purchase. We don't have to craft it, which is very nice. So if you want to go out on a gathering quest, make, uh, purchase this armor. It's 300 zenny per piece. It's pretty expensive, or you can craft it. Um, but this gives us uh, some very useful items for gathering stuff. We have chain mail. <laughs> it's like Dark Souls. What does this give us? It gives us uh, botanist for collecting herbs and stuff, defense boost, guard, stamina surge. Okay. Now we have the hunter set. We can now hunt a bunch of monsters to get uh, some stuff there. We have the Great Izuchi set. So these are this is the set from the great monster we just fought. If you notice that the defense for all these is 10, and that's just starting out, so that's really strong. Um, and we do need one tail for the, the arms, unfortunately. This gives us Critical Eye 3, which is plus 15% affinity, which is great. Recovery speed. Um, so if we get hit, there's a small amount of damage that can naturally recover. That will speed that up, which is always nice. And Constitution, which just reduces our stamina by 10%. So it's not the most awesome set, but it does look really cool. Let me show you what that looks like. Let's go to Preview. Press X. It looks really nice, doesn't it? You can deck yourself out in Izuchi stuff. Okay, the other thing I want to show you now is weapons. So let's go over to Weapon. Go to Longsword. And if you notice, we now have the Great Izuchi Weapon. Um, it's 70 attack, so you may be asking yourself, why would we want to go from an 80 or even 90 attack weapon down to 70? And the reason is that green sharpness. So as we fight other monsters, we'll start to notice that yellow sharpness is going to bounce off monsters a lot more often. Bouncing off is never a good thing, so we definitely want to have better sharpness, which will make it so that we don't bounce off. The other difference, and this is very hard to, to explain... Uh, but Yellow Sharpness has a weird thing that if you hit at the very end of an animation or the very beginning of an animation, it actually does less damage than in the middle of an animation. It's just a weird little modifier the ga game uses uh, to keep it in balance. Uh, from green onward, it doesn't have that issue. So in general, try to avoid Yellow Sharpness uh, and go for Green Sharpness. Uh, but early on in the game, I think it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. There are some really good choices here. Um, but I definitely like green sharpness, so I think this is a fun weapon to go for. And it has 10% affinity, which is going to be a 10% chance to do a critical hit. So let's go ahead and talk to people here. So this guy here is our great wirebug NPC. He will give us uh, great wirebugs as we play the game or ask us to do certain tasks. And once we get those, those will allow us to set up new shortcuts. So he just gave us 11 of them. Once you use them, they're permanently in there, so let's definitely use some of them. Uh, what does he want? Oh, he's got a sale going on. So he's got the cat, he's got the music. If he's got a sale, he sells everything at half off, and he has a lottery, which you can do to win some very useful items. So let's talk to him. If you notice now, if we go to buy something, uh, everything is half off. So if you're ever going to buy potions from him for any reason, make sure you do it when it's half off. Or we can sell items that we don't need, or we can do the lottery. Oh my gosh, I hope I get lucky. So he's got all these items here, if you notice on this cart. Get my camera out. Uh, these are special items that every so often he will have available as the prize during a lottery. And if you win it, you can decorate your room with them. 
and I, I, I think I went 100 hours without even getting one. So if I get this one on this video, I'll be very happy. Wish me luck. Wow, and we got it. That's amazing. <laughs> Too bad I'm not using the save data. That's horrible. Let me show you what that thing is. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so happy I got that. So let's go to our room. Let's talk to our housekeeper. And he basically mimics all the other functions in the game. Like he can do the dojo from here instead of you going to the buddy plaza. Let's go to room interior and let's change this thing. Let's, uh, we got all these little spots for trinkets. Let's do the a clove, the middle one here. And put the twins. Ah, uh, let's do a clove one. There we go. Oh, aren't they so cute? Good gosh. Look at these things. Oh, I love it. Take a picture of that. <laughs> if you take pictures, you can actually uh, customize your room with pictures in the end. You can choose pictures that you put up. <laughs> it's quite fun. Wow, so we got lucky. Okay, that feels good. Um, so this guy has a quest. He wants us to level up our dogs, I think. So he can give more gear for the dogs. Yeah, he wants us to do that. We'll do that. No problem. So just talk to everybody with a bubble is generally the best advice. Like if you uh, are doing stuff. Let's check out the dog stuff, actually. Uh, K9 Izuchi. So what does he look like? He looks like this. This is the Izuchi outfit for the dog. It's very cute. And the cat... Looks like this. <laughs> it's like a bandit with a nice cure sword. Very cool. I like these things. So as we craft stuff, we'll be able to upgrade them as well. So let's go and very quickly take care of an Izuchi so we can make its sword. I want to show you how that looks. Maybe we'll be able to make its armor as well. So we'll go to two. Now, I'm going to use some techniques in this hunt that I've not taught you. Uh, the point is, is I want to show you that each weapon has a lot of depth. Although you don't have to be able to use all that depth in order to enjoy the weapon, uh, there is a lot of stuff that you can do later on, you can learn, that will help you out. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of these skills uh, just to show them off. Again, I don't want to sh uh, teach you all these skills because this is not meant to be a longsword tutorial, and you may not be using the longsword at all. Um, I'm actually not quite a fan of the weapon myself. Uh, I think all the weapons are great, but it's just not m just not my cup of tea. But let's go ahead and use it, and I will start doing some of these techniques, and you'll be like, wow, okay, weapons have a lot of depth. Hopefully, I'll be able to demo it, or maybe I'll suck really bad, and you'll be like, wow, the longsword looks horrible, and then everybody can be very mad at me for demoing it very bad. So one really nice uh, thing here is we have a mud beetle and that will cause a monster to get really weak um, and will do a lot of damage when they're weak, which is great. So I'm gonna use that once I have spirit up to level red. Watch what we're gonna we'll try to knock him down. Give me your tail. Watch what we're gonna do this. Oops. Give me your tail. Do your triple. One, two. Th Why are you doing it over there, dude? <laughs> yes, the, the longsword has some very neat techniques that you can use. I really need to break that tail though, and I have not broken it yet. 
need to focus. Yeah, so the... You know, maybe I'll show you off some of these at the end of the video. It would be unfair not to show you some of the goods in the... Uh, in the uh, the arsenal. Actually, I completely forgot to use my mud beetle, but I need to sharpen up really fast. That was really dumb of me. Hey. Was he almost dead? Uh, we can mount him. This is something that I want you guys to do on your own time. There is that mounting tutorial. Uh, but as you do jumping attacks or you do silk bind attacks, which I'll show you in a second, uh, you or if a monster attacks another monster, sometimes they'll go into a rideable state. There's a tutorial that teaches you how to ride them, so definitely make sure you do that. But we're gonna go ahead and ride this monster. We're just gonna run him into a wall, but we can we can take him all around to fight other monsters and stuff. But I don't want this tutorial to be that long. So for now, we'll just hit Y to hit him into a wall, and we're good. Oof! That's gotta hurt. There we go. So as you get used to the weapon, you'll be able to kill things much faster. And that was some really shoddy play right there as well, so... Don't think that that is what good longsword usage looks like. It's not. Let's go ahead and carve him. We're just aiming for the tail here. If we get really lucky, we might get two, but I just want to get one. Wow, and we didn't get the tail. This is called uh, streaming bad luck. When I'm recording, then I get a very bad luck. Let me see what the actual chance of getting his tail is. It's probably lower than I thought. 100 notes, large monster, materials. So his tail is, if we go into here, we can't see it, but broken part rewards 80% and we're not getting it. So we're either getting very lucky or maybe I'm only breaking it once and I need to break it twice. Hmm. It says that we cannot carve from the body. We can only get it through a capture reward. So this might actually be a good chance for me to show you really quickly what capturing a monster is all about. There is a tutorial for this, um, but we'll go ahead and just do it ourselves. There's another sale going on. Wow, two sales in a row. Why? I cannot believe. This game is getting all... I just played with somebody the other day who's played for 140 hours and never got anything. We just got two in a row. That's crazy. So let's um, let's go ahead and capture. Um, let me show you how that's done. So we go here. We do have some pitfall traps. So we're going to grab those. And we will go and buy some trank bombs. We'll need two of them. Uh, let's send him to our pouch. Does he sell them? He doesn't sell them. Great. Okay. Never mind. I think we need to go to Randine. So, uh, this is the one area I never explained actually yet. So this is a very good point to do this. But over here in Buddy Plaza, we could just quick warp it, but I'm not. Uh, we have Randine the Argosy. She is our trading captain. Uh, she, we can send off different cats and dogs to collect items. Uh, so for example, we don't want to go and collect honey all the time. We can have our cats go out in submarines and collect honey for us. It's very nice. Very convenient. Uh, but she also has some items that we can trade points for, which is very useful. So she is the farm, so to say. 
So we only have one cat and one dog. So let's go over here and quick grab a second cat. Um, so let's scout a buddy. So we can choose, um, we can choose, you know, like, uh, what type of buddy we want. Let's say we want a, a dark here cat or a green dog or whatever. We can go ahead and choose it and he'll find it for us. Let's go ahead and just hire, uh, let's hire anybody we want. Let's hire Arthur, a collect cat. That works for me. Rename him? Nope. <laughs> cat pops out. Okay, good. Bye. We got ourselves another cat. Good. We're going to send that cat off to get some honey. I highly recommend that you farm for honey early in the game so you can make mega potions. This is the most confusing menu in the entire game, in my opinion. So, let me try to explain it. So, exchange for items is basically just using your Kimura points to get special items from her. Um, so, this is her menu. We can trade goods, and these are different stuff like raw meat, uh, nets for making traps, and stuff like that. Very useful. Rare finds is just sometimes she'll have some very expensive items. I wouldn't touch it so much. Special goods at certain times during the game when you do certain milestones or if you hunt a monster 10 or more times, she'll give you a cool little item for your room. And then order items is what we want to do. So this is the trading one. So we're going to hit trade request, which we only have one slot, one submarine. We'll unlock more as we progress. We'll select our cat, Arthur. And we'll select we want him to get honey. Where's the honey? There we go. Bring me back some honey. Then we're going to hit confirm. And then he will send off in a submarine. <laughs> uh, I'll skip this for now, but you should watch it. It's really funny. Um, we can do some bargaining here. Now we're done. Um, so the trade request is, is confusing because it's the menu we were just at. Um, we can do buddy bargaining, and we can choose to use more points if it's a higher level cat to get more items, but this is a low level cat, so we can't. Uh, so that's it. So we'll send him off to get honey, so that's good. I thought we can get trank bombs, but we can't. Uh, if we go up this tree here, after every five hunts or so, you want to come up on this tree and go into your cahoots nest. There's always some very useful items, especially for the cats and the dogs. These Lagna apples are very, very good. They're used all over the place, like for the training dojo, for leveling them up even faster. They're used during the bargaining so that they get even more items. And they're used during this mini game, which you'll interact with later in the game. So, all very good stuff. Let me quick see here how to craft a... Okay, so to craft a Trank Bomb, we need Sleep Herbs and Parish Rooms. We have Parish Rooms, but we do not have Sleep Herbs. So we could send off our cat at Rondine in order to get them, but I think we'll just collect them in the map. I think that would be the easiest way to do this. Uh, we can make a Shock Trap, or we have the Pitfall Traps from our uh, sort of Welcome to Monster Hunter Rise reward. We'll use those, uh, but we will pick up uh, some Sleep Herbs. So let's grab our Parish Rooms so that we can craft some uh, tranks. So this is our parish rooms. That's good, we'll restock up on potions and let's head out and capture a great Izuchi. Let's go ahead and make sure we eat. I am going to edit this down, uh, I think probably, so you don't have to watch the whole hunt. Here we go, so here is where a sleep herb is. So you can see here on the map, this is where we're at. We'll pick it up and now we can actually uh, filter by them. We'll go into our crafting list if we press in R, we can get the craftable, so it only pops up the craftable items first. That makes it easy so we don't have to like go through the list and search for it. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we can craft some Trank Bombs. So we'll, crank, we'll make two of them, and we are ready. So now it's time for me to go kill another great Izuchi, and we're going to capture it and see if we can get the tail. I'm definitely going to try to break the tail first. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, now that you see the monster icon is blue, it means it's almost dead. It means that it can be captured. Um, as we saw in our list before, items that you can get sort of differ between if you carve them, or if you kill them, or if you capture them. Uh, we know that the tail uh, we can get from breaking it. 
and we can also get it in quest rewards, but we could also get it possibly as a capture reward. So what we want to do is lay down a trap, which is a strat, uh, shock trap or pitfall trap, get the monster in it, and then hit it quickly with two trank bombs. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll place the trap here, get our trank bombs ready. When it falls in, we'll capture it. One, two, done. Now because of this, we won't be carving the monster. We'll get uh, two rewards. Sometimes uh, the, it'll be a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Um, so there's no clear answer on whether it's better to capture or carve. You can definitely end a quest faster by capturing it, but also means you have less time to break all the parts on the monster's body. And of course, it depends on what item you're looking for. Sometimes you definitely want to capture, sometimes you want to carve. So make sure to check your hunter notes on which one you want. And here we see we got a tail in the target rewards, which is good. For broken parts, we even got a tail reward, which is great. Um, and for capture, we didn't, even though we did have a choice, uh, a chance at it. We're going to go ahead and take all that, but that is a very successful hunt. And this is the lovely grind of Monster Hunter, is learning monsters, getting better at fighting them, grinding them for parts, and then making armor and weapons out of them. It's quite fun. So now that we have uh, hunted the Great Izuchi three times, we should be able to make a bunch of stuff. So let's first go off and make its sword so we can make its scimitar, which is great. Let's go ahead and do that. We will equip that. Let's go ahead and check out its armor. We should be able to make a bunch of armor as well. Probably all of it, maybe. Uh, do we have enough money? We do. Uh, the good thing about this game is if you put on more armor pieces of the same series, uh, you do get a bonus. Um, so if we go over here, we see a five piece bonus gives plus three to all of our elemental resistances. It's a nice perk. It's not something that dictates that we have to have it. So if there's a piece like a head from another set that you really like that skill, go ahead and mix and match. That's the point. Uh, but for fashion hunting, so to say, um, a lot of people like to have full sets on because it's pretty. Uh, and this one is a nice set. We get critical eye level three, so plus 15% affinity. Add that to the, I think we had 10% on the weapon already. Recovery speed and stamina. That is a healthy, good set and looks really nice as well, doesn't it? So we go to status. We have 25% chance of doing a critical hit, which is awesome. And we have green sharpness, so we're not bouncing off. And we've got good resistance as well. Uh, we do have some armor spheres from doing all those subquests, so let's make sure and use some of them. So, so let's, uh, how many, so it takes two in order to upgrade a part now, okay. So we can upgrade once, that's nice. And because we crafted a bunch of stuff, we should have a bunch of scraps left over for our cats and dogs. Look at that, big happy family. Let's do a group picture. Come on, kitty cats. So if we go over to our camera, this is a cute feature. And we hit camera, if we hit uh, the L button, press in the left stick, we get our Kahoot, which is the little owl. It's actually flying around with a camera. We can position it, we can go to our pose and gestures. And our cats and dogs will pose with us, it's really funny. And we'll press A to take a picture, that'll save it to the album, but it will also save this to your Nintendo Switch. Uh, without all this UI, you'll get a very pretty picture uh, saved to your system. Uh, but yeah, have fun with the camera. Uh, it's quite interesting. So yeah, our status is great now. We have 70 attack, good bonuses, and we're ready to go and really just take on more monsters. Um, and that really is the loop of Monster Hunter, right? So go ahead and make sure we have some more optional quests. And we have all these new monsters. Uh, we do need to do three of them in order to progress in the story. Uh, so you can choose any ones you want. You can do like the uh, Arzuros is fun. Uh, I love Legombi. Uh, but make sure to do all these, they're really fun. So the last thing I'll do now that you know how to play the game, so to say, is I do want to go to the training area and show you what I was holding off from telling you about, um, just because I don't think that it's very necessary early in the game. Let's have uh, these guys wait so we don't get distracted by them. Let's go press start, uh, the plus button, go over to training options. I'm going to lower the head position to... Uh, no, actually, what I'm going to do is... Yeah, I'll, I'll put the head position to low. And there are some extra techniques for the longsword um, that I wasn't showing you. So let's go ahead and build up some spirit level. 
and I will show you the wire buttons. So the wire bug arts for a, um, normally when you're not having your weapon out, when you press ZL, you can use the wire bugs. The same thing works when you have your weapon uh, out. Uh, I do recommend you go into your hunter notes. Uh, you can check your weapon controls and you can check your longsword. It actually has all this stuff listed. Um, it doesn't have like everything listed, but uh, it's very um, useful to read. Anyways, when you hold down ZL and you press X, what will happen is you'll jump off, you'll jump forward like this. And if you manage to jump off a monster, so if you do it really close to them and you jump off them, like sort of vault off their head, um, you can do two attacks. You can press the X button. That will do this downward thrust. And look at my spirit gauge. It's now starting to slowly automatically increase. And that's great because that means I can go into my spirit combo and by the time I get to the final move, I have enough juice in there to get to the final move. It's still going up. It's <laughs> That's pretty great, isn't it? Let's do our spirit attack here. The other thing we can do is when we have the, the jump, we can very quickly press ZR and that will do the spirit helm breaker. It will consume a level of spirit, um, but it will do a lot of damage. Uh, here we go, let me show you this. Yeah, that is a ton of damage. So we do lose a level, um, but it does a lot of damage. So this is basically the loop of the weapon. You wanna get to red. Um, attacking red does a lot of damage normally. And then when you have a really big opening, you can go ahead and do the spirit helm breaker for a lot of damage. Go ahead and sharpen here. There is another move that you can do, which is holding ZL and pressing A. This will take two wire bugs to do. It's not a move that a lot of people enjoy, um, but I will show you what it does. Uh, so now we have a projectile, so <laughs> he's gonna hit me in the face with projectiles. Thanks, buddy. So if we hold it, we'll do this block here, and basically we'll counterattack. Um, it, any attack hits you during that pose. Let me go over to wire bugs and turn this to infinite use so I can show this off better. Uh, we do this wall here and you just sort of hold this pose for a few seconds. And if you get hit during it, you'll do a counter attack. Okay, that was really stupid. So if you do it really far away, you're not going to hit anything. <laughs> Good for you, Hunter. And if you notice, it does consume a level of spirit gauge, which is why a lot of people don't like this attack. Um, yeah, 170 damage is great and all, but you can just do a spirit helmbreaker and do even more damage. Um, and the fact that, you know, you have these fate slashes, it's very easy to counter and move around monsters. You really don't need it. Uh, let me turn off the uh, projectiles for a second so I can show you the other moves really fast. There is a special sheath that you can do with the longsword by pressing after an attack, if you press uh, Z, R, and B at the same time, you go into this special sheath. And this is pretty much you just at poise, just waiting for the monster. Um, it only lasts for a few seconds and you'll put your weapon away. Uh, but you'll be like, come on, buddy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You can press X to do this wonderful EI slash. And if you notice, our spare gauge is already now gradually going up as well. So this is a much easier way to have that effect than doing that sort of uh, silk bind attack. The cool thing about that special sheath is if you notice after a spirit round slash, we automatically put away our weapon. We can cancel out of that by doing the special sheath by pressing uh, X, uh, Z, R, and B. So let's go ahead and do that. So a popular combo is to do the spirit round slash, merely go into a special sheath, hit X, Boom, so we're already back in the action and our bar is automatically going up. And now we can pretty much just go straight into red if we want. Uh, we'll have more than enough energy by the time we get to that final hit. Okay, so this weapon also does have some counters, which I'll show you really fast. Again, you don't need to know all these right away. This is just advanced techniques. Um, but when you do that special sheath, you can hit ZR and that will do an EI spirit slash. If you do that right before you get hit, you'll actually do a special counter that will raise your spirit up another level and do hits. It's kind of crazy. So right now we have this thing set to stomping, so we it's a very easy one to practice countering. Oops, that's what happens. There we go, boom. So we do some hits and we got red gauge. 
That's pretty great, isn't it? You use that red gauge to... Oops. We can use that red gauge to do that spirit helmbreaker. Get more hits. Come over here, start hitting some more. Go and wait for it. Ooh, counter and we're back at red. So very easy. The other one is called the foresight slash where this one is a little bit tighter and it's more of a parry. Uh, there's an actual counter one, um, which is done and after you do an attack, if you press Z, L and A, um, you'll do this Foresight Slash. If you do that massive evade through an attack, or right before you get hit, uh, you'll actually do a counter hit, and then you can follow it up with ZR to do a round slash. In order to do Foresight, though, it does consume a full uh, your full Spirit Gaze. So if you notice, we had Spirit sort of built up. Now when I do it, it uses all of it. Um, we can do it without it, but we get like no iframes. It's kind of pointless to do. Um, another reason why people really like doing this move is because even if now we try to do a foresight slash and we whiff it, if we notice we still have energy being built up so we can keep doing it. And that's the benefit of having a gradual increase on your bar. So let me show you what that looks like if we nail it. And ZR will finish it up with another round slash. So yeah, some very fast ways to get your energy way up and you have like pretty much a full bar. Uh, when you do this foresight slash, so very powerful. And I guess the very final thing I'll tell you about the longsword is, if you really want to get good at the weapon, the real strength of it is the delayed input that you can do. For example, we know that we have our combo like this, where we just hit X and stuff. Um, but what you can do is delay your inputs by quite a bit. You can go like this, wait, wait, wait. Wait, now delayed inputs is really good because you can see what a monster is about to do. Uh, and then you can do stuff like get in here, bait slash, you know, you can do counters that way. Wait for it, ching, you know, and do your foresight counter. There we go. But you get the idea. Um, just delaying your input so that you can just sort of like wait for the monster, see what they're gonna do. Huh? You wanna hit me, buddy? You wanna hit me? You know, you can do stuff like that. So it's a fun weapon, uh, but definitely check out all the other weapons. Uh, the the longsword may not be for you. Um, there's other ones. So let me now give my attempt. I may ed edit this out, but this is gonna be my elevator pitch for all the different weapons in the game, just to give you a real sloppy overview of what they are. So the great sword. Let me turn off the attacks from this monster, otherwise I'm going to get very annoyed very fast. The great sword is sort of like a hit and run weapon. It's very, very clunky if you try to walk with it. The attacks are like and very slow. The whole point of this weapon actually is to run in, see the head and go bam and get out. And if you can, if you can line it up, you see the head coming, wait for it, hold X. And you can do charged hits for big, big damage. So you're just seeing stuff like 75. Well, it gets even better. Like you can go all the way up even higher. Boom, 82. You like that? Well, you can go even higher than that. The whole point of the great sword is massive, massive damage in one hit. Boom, 236. Takes a lot of commitment and knowing where our monster is going to be, but when you do, boom. There's 206. I think it did less because we're using yellow sharpness, and again, it depends on where you hit. Pretty cool, isn't it? So yeah, Greatsword is wonderful for doing big attacks. It does have a guard, just in case you need it. Um, and it's really fun for doing jump attacks. <laughs> fun weapon. So that is the Greatsword. I already gave you the sales pitch on the Longsword. It's great for countering. It's very easy to do. Uh, and has some absolutely devastating uh, silk bind attacks. Uh, let's see here. Next one is Sword and Shield. I'm going to do very bad here. The Sword and Shield is very, 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 very fast. Um, so it does lots of shorter hits um, that are weaker but much faster. It also means that you can run out of the way much faster. Um, you can play this thing more like an action game. The depth of this weapon comes from its ability to do lots of uh, combos. 
So we got like these perfect rush combos, we can jump in the air and do all sorts of things. And it's the only weapon in the game in which we can use items with our weapon out, which is kind of nice. It even has a shield, so we can have actually we can actually guard if we really need to, uh, or we can do special attacks. But this is the weapon you want to go if you want lots of mobility. You want to be able to run around really fast and get around safely. Sword and shield is definitely the weapon to go with. Let's see here. Next one is the dual blades. So this is very much like the uh, sword and shield. It's very fast. Actually, it's really fast. Um, so the whole idea with this weapon is you're going to be hitting with dual blades. So small attacks, not a lot of damage, but they add up very fast. The selling point of this weapon is you can press ZR to go into a thing called demon mode. And look how fast we are. It is ridiculous. When we're in demon mode, we do more damage and we build up our demon gauge. Um, and when we build up our demon gauge, we can get access to all these awesome demon moves, even without being in demon mode. So now we're in arc demon mode. We can do crazy stuff like, Bwah! Oh, that's crazy. And we can go back into demon mode and do lots more hits. So yeah, the uh, dual blades is all about doing lots and lots of hits. It's got some crazy silk bind attacks and combos that are easy to do. So yeah, very fun weapon if you like to be flat, fast and furious. I very much enjoy these weapons. Next weapon, uh, the lance. Another one of my favorites. If you just want to stare a monster in the face and not be afraid, then the lance is your friend. It's got the best shield in the game. Oosh. So you can pretty much stand there and hold your guard against the monster. You can thrust with surgical precision and hit the monster anywhere you want to break body parts. You even have some charge attacks now. Boom, to even more attacks. You've got lots of moves that use your shield. You can charge at monsters and do multiple hits. And the great thing about this weapon is it's got counters, like actual counters. So we can sit here like this. Count. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm in the menu. You want to counter that? Yeah, counterattacks. You're not hurting me. Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, onslaught, onslaught. So, very fun weapon. Next weapon. Gun Lance. So similarly, if you want the strongest shield in the game, the Gun Lance has it as well. Except where the normal lance is all just about poking, 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 this thing can do actual shells of damage in between attacks. How awesome is that? And you've got all these cannons and crazy stuff that you can reload. We can unload all of our bullets at once. <laughs> we can explode with a wyvern cannon. This is pretty much Lance, but with a lot of extra firepower and pizzazz. It eats through sharpness pretty fast, but you know what? That's okay, because it's got some really cool moves. Isn't that cool? Boom. So yeah, it's a Lance with a gun. Very neat. It's got a little bit limited mobility compared to a Lance, but it definitely has the explosive uh, pizzazz that the Lance does not. Hammer. So the hammer is a special type of weapon that does blunt damage. So you cannot cut off tails using this thing, but you can break parts. And the best thing is, is you can use the hammer to knock monsters out. So when you hit their head with a weapon like a hammer, boom, they are KO'd. And you're going to have lots of opportunities then to do lots of massive combos. So the hammer just has tons of simplicity, but wonderful attacks to smash in the head of a monster. And some of the coolest um, uh, silk bind attacks as well. You can build up here. Boom. <laughs> or build up here. Yeah, so you're going to be knocking out monsters. You can run around while you're charging. So unlike the great sword, you're not committed to one spot. You find the opportunity and then boom. Whammo. Super fun weapon. It is not the only blunt type weapon. Uh, again, blunt, if you go into your hunter notes, if you see large monsters under ailments, uh, the left is a sword icon that is a cutting type weapon. You got the hammer icon that is for a blunt weapon, and then the bullet is for gunner type weapons. 
these show you the values of the hit zones. So 80 means that 80% of your damage is going to uh, connect. 45 means that only 45% of your damage is connect. So the higher the number, the more damage you do. The lower the number, the less damage you do. So if you are a gunner, shooting at the tail is only going to get you 35, where shooting at the head is going to give you 75. So definitely make sure to pay attention to this. But blunt type weapons, there are two in the game. The hammer is one of them. The next one is the hunting horn, which is incredibly fabulous. The whole point of the hunting horn is that it looks sluggish, doesn't it? Look at this thing. Oh, oh, it looks so slow. Just press one button and boom. It is now one of the fastest weapons in the game for the next three minutes. The whole point of this is that you can buff yourself and all your teammates just by doing two attacks in a row of the same type. For example, our status right now, we are 55 attack. If I do two A button attacks, boom! We are now at 60, so we gain extra damage. And if we do one of each of the attacks, we get this awesome one hit combo, which can KO monsters as well. The whole point about the hunting horn is that it plays songs that buffs you and other hunters. It can knock out monsters, it can also exhaust them faster as well. So the more you smash a monster, the more quicker they are to get exhausted. It's got some really cool silk bind attacks as well, which can do some really snazzy damage. So yeah, a very fun weapon that people are enjoying. It used to be really complicated in the past games, but now it's not. And I actually do have a tutorial all the way up, already up for this weapon if you're curious. Switch Axe. This was my main weapon going through the story of this game. The Switch Axe is two things. It is an axe. Nice, huge axe with pretty good mobility. Just absolutely huge range of like motion. You could be like a mile away from a monster and hitting them. It's got furious axe swipes that you can do. Huge combo finishers. Blah! And at any time, you can press ZR and you morph into a slower but more powerful sword. And here you can hack and slash away at the monster. And the Switch Axe also comes with the explosive finisher called an Elemental Discharge, where you can charge up your sword, do lots of hits, and end with an explosion. Go ahead and recharge your sword and go in between the two. It's quite a fun weapon, especially with all these morphing that you can do. Uh, you can really do uh, lots of utility with it. And when we're charged up, we can actually jump onto a monster and do our discharge as well. <laughs> it's such a flashy weapon, isn't it? The switch axe. Next weapon. If you can't tell, every weapon is just amazing in this game. Next one is the charge blade. So this is very similar to the Switch Axe. It's got a sword, but it's more like a sword and shield. You can guard, you can hit fast with it, you can move around well, or you can morph it into a big heavy axe where it's slower, it's gaudier, but man does it hit for a lot more damage. The whole point of the charge blade is charging. So the more you hit with the sword, you charge up files at the top of the screen. And you can use that file energy to charge it into your weapon then you can go and switch to your axe and use those files to do extra damage with some really big finishers that can also stun monsters cool thing about this weapon is it's got multiple levels of charge you can charge your shield you can charge your sword you can charge everything on this weapon here now we're charging up our shield now when we charge up our shield we get an even bigger attack so this is a good weapon if you just want to just go crazy and just charge and go for that big finisher. This is definitely a weapon for you. For example, we've got a charge shield. Now check this out. <laughs> or we can charge our sword. And now our sword does extra file hits as well. So we get extra attacks on that. It's crazy. It's really fun. And the cool thing about this weapon is there's lots of attacks in which the shield comes up so you can guard as you attack. It is really kind of a Swiss army knife in the world of Monster Hunter. Cool weapon. Next one, the Insect Glaive. Insect Glaive is famously hard to use at first because the bug is really slow, but it's got a glaive and it's got a bug. And you send off your bug towards the monster and it will suck extracts. We got defense up. 
We've got movement up. We've got attack up. And now with all three colors, we are super powered. We can do lots of attacks. Really furious, really stylish. And the cool thing about this weapon is, is you can fly. You can jump in the air and do aerial attacks. And as you do hits in the air, your weapon gets even stronger. How awesome is that? So no weapon has the mobility that this weapon has. <laughs> It's so neat. And how long can you stay in the air? How far can you go? Well, check this out. The floor is lava! Yeah, you can do quite a bit with this weapon. Fun times. Light bow gun. Light bow gun and heavy bow gun are not too uh, different. Light bow gun, you want to play sort of like a shooting game? Well, you can do that. Get out your gun and shoot away. You got pierce ammo, which does multiple hits. You've got normal ammo, which is just heavy and just psh, 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 single hits. You can recharge. You get little sticky ammos that you can go and plot on the ground and then blow up at will. Boom. Boom. Heck, you even have the ability to put it on the head of a monster. Let's go ahead and do that. Boop. And now it's got a sticky on its head. And if we hit it, Boom! We do more damage! <laughs> the bow gun is very fun. It is going to take some item management because you are going to have to craft and bring in a lot of ammo. But if you don't mind doing uh, the micromanagement, the ammo is absolutely fantastic. We've got all sorts of different types with different clips. Uh, so yeah, the bow gun is a very, very fun weapon. And this thing is super fast. But let's say you want to do a gun, but you don't mind it to be slow, heavy, and powerful. Well, guess what? There's also the heavy bow gun. Heavy bow gun is exactly what you want. It's slow. Um, it's not fast, but man, does it hit like a truck. So this is it with it out. Very sluggish. You can put a shield on here so you auto guard. You can shoot big, heavy clips. You can even charge up your shots for more damage. You get the same awesome ammo as the light bow gun, as well as some special shots as well. You get sniper up here, wait for a good moment. Boom! <laughs> uh, we've got sticky ammo we can put on the face of a monster. We've got cluster ammo we can set off to explode. And yeah, it's basically the same goodness of the light bow gun, but in a heavier form with more ammo, uh, clip size, and more power. So yeah, heavy bow gun, very fun. And last but not least, elevator pitch, we've got the bow. This is probably the favorite um, ranged weapon for um, most people to use because it's easier to grasp, but this is one where it's all about distance and charging. So for here, we're out of distance. If we shoot, you'll be like, wow, this thing does four damage. Wow, it, it only does one damage. This weapon sucks. Well, the whole point of this weapon is all about knowing your distance. Once you know your distance, you can charge up your weapon and do a lot more hits. And you can put on different coatings, which will also increase the power of your weapon. You can do charge steps to charge up faster. And this weapon even has the ability to do buffs for you and your teammates. So we have healing, we've got affinity up, all sorts of fun stuff. cool thing about the bow is that you don't have to worry about ammo. You have unlimited arrows, unlike bow guns, where you do have to worry about your ammo. But you are going to be way out of stamina at all times, so you are going to have to worry about stamina management. But still, a very fun weapon indeed. And those are the 14 weapons of Monster Hunter, so there's a lot of depth for every single one. Uh, whichever one is going to resonate with you, go ahead and pick it. Anyways, I hope this gives you guys an introduction to Monster Hunter. Hopefully you understand the loop now which is you go off and you hunt a monster, you come back and you craft stuff out of it. Uh, as you go on further, things will get much harder uh, and you'll open up new areas. So you're not just hunting in the shrines, but you've got like an ice map, you've got a desert map and all these other things as well. 
The village quest is taking things a little bit slower, but it allows you to unlock stuff in the village and tells a story. Or if you want to accelerate it, you can go to the gathering hall, which are harder quests. Um, but instead of just ending at low rank, it goes into high rank, which is the majority of this game. Um, I definitely recommend you starting out with village and doing it to completion. It doesn't take too long uh, and it's a lot of fun. And then you can go into the gathering hub and do it. And there is a function where if you do everything in low rank in the village, if you don't want to do low rank in the hub, they'll have sort of like a test quest. And if you pass it, they'll let you advance up to high rank without having to do the gathering hub. Either way, I think you're going to have fun grinding and playing monsters over and over, getting better at them, learning their tells better, making lots of gear out of them, and just having fun with you and your friends. I hope this guide helped you guys out. Let me know down in the comments below if it did, hopefully, or maybe it was just as confusing as the actual game is as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy hunting.